All right, I believe we are live. So just wanted to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Tonight is session two of our boxing league. So tonight we are going to have myself, which is Ryan, and then Zach obviously joining me as well. We're going to be opening our boxes and brewing our decks. Um, we have quite the, quite the shoes or quite the encore to follow up with after Mike and Folger's amazing box rips yesterday. It was bananas how good they were. So we have to definitely uh, do something about that to chew, try and compete. Um, so with that, we're going to start with Zach. So Zach, yeah. say a quick hello and tell us what you're doing. What's all, dudes? Uh, I'm going to be here opening Zendikar Rising. Mainly, I'm looking to hit either a three-color commander or Omnath to play as many colors as possible with this set. Uh, I don't think Omnath is going to be, like, super great, honestly, because what the best thing, like, how many land drops can you realistically make in a turn? Maybe two if you have an Evolving Wilds. <laughs> That's it. So, I don't think Omnath will be, like, crazy overpowered, uh, but it'll just be good to play all four colors with them. The three color yeah, I, I think are much better though, for, for for the whole thing. So I guess we'll just jump right into it. Yep, let's jump right in. Clean up that trash right. later off my floor. So for those of you who don't know, he is going to be he is playing Zendikar. Uh, he is opening Zendikar Rising, and then we're going to be following up with me, which I will be doing Dominaria. Oh, I so. totally forgot this had an expedition box topper. Oh, oh, open it last. Open it yeah, last. You get to put it in your deck right if you want to. Right there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get these packs out of here. All righty. All right. Ooh, these are really loose. Surprisingly loose. Oh, yeah. What do you mean loose? What are you talking about? that is like there's so much oh give. okay yeah oh is like a little is there a little tear thing here i don't know yeah they have a little preparation we are in the modern age my i friend. haven't opened a new age booster pack in i don't know how long <laughs> in days <laughs> in days i <I'll> just <laughs> open packs willy-nilly yeah you do yeah cardboard crack all right that little guy uh Basic land. Start with foil, Kazandu, Necro, uh, Landfall, Game of Life. Not that, not that great. Our rare here is Roiling Vortex. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Roiling Vortex deals one damage to them. Every player casts a spell. No mana was spent to cast a spell deals five damage, and then pay a red. Your opponents can't gain life this turn. Uh, I mean, that's a clock. That's a clock. <laughs> <laughs> One damage a I turn. I mean, sure. It's that's mini not a great clock, Vortex. <laughs> uh, I got a Mana Dork here. It's an uncommon Relic Vial. Uh, two Tap Sack. A Creature Draw Card. It's like control a, a Cleric. Vial has when this creature dies. Each opponent loses a life again. Like, that could be interesting for an Aristocrat deck. Uh, yeah. As long as it's equipped, this creature has haste. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1. And when it dies, it deal damage equal to it. So you get to like fling it at something cool. So make sure you're showing the whole card, because right now we're only seeing the top of them. Oh, are we? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no sorry. worries. So Arden so. Electromancer, I am not familiar at all with this set. Uh, oh, well, <laughs> so all. we're all going on a journey together, is yeah. what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah. uh, this kick gains haste. Interesting. Uh, it says draw a card. It's got to be great. Uh, so we have a pump spell here. Uh, flash, little combat trick, cleansing fire. Into the Royal, hey yo, that's going in every blue deck. Always good. Into the Royal. Oh, nice. And we got a pacifism. Or pacifism, or what's the one that's pacifism plus can't activate abilities? Uh, arrest? Yeah, arrest, but also for yeah. planeswalkers. That's a really good one. Yeah. Ugh, I used to be able to just, like, two thumb open these things, but this glue on here is <laughs> insane. About to go get a pair of scissors. <laughs> now, now, be a man and open your <laughs> open your packs like you should. Look, Look at these full arts. Ooh, another foil. Uh, Drana's silencer. 
Ooh, wow. Six mana for a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus X, until it's remember X is the number of creatures in your party. Interesting. It's removal. Yeah, Tazri is in this is in this set. Yeah, Tazri is. That's so a five color. You might end up with some party shenanigans, come to think of it. That's true. There's not uh, yeah, I have to play all of them. Uh when it enters the battlefield, put a counter plus one plus one counter on target creature control. Whenever it attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a counter on it. Ooh, that thing gets out of hand quickly. Um, yep. Oh, this is one of like the flip land guys. Cool. Um, oh, that'd be good for your fixing. Target opponent reveals their hand, and you choose a card from it, convert it to three or greater. Oh, that's going to be awesome to play. They can discard a CMC three or greater spell. Uh, mm. Six mana. These cards got like scuffs on them. That's weird. Maybe it's because you were opening it like a. Like, like, like a, a manhandler. <laughs> you were like spreading them outside. I don't know what you were doing when you tried to open I them. I wish I had pack. another booster pack here. I could show you. It's really easy to open them that way. <laughs> Returning target creature card. Uh, and up to one cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, that's sweet. Love reanimation stuff. Is it yours? Yeah, your graveyard. Landfall. Uh, put a counter on it and it gains flying. That's hot. So those are the uncommons. Modal spell. Love those. Um, so Always good. Somewhere. What modal? Which one is it again? Uh, subtle strike, two minute instant speed. Either make something, put a counter on something, or give something minus one, minus one until end of turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can okay. choose one or both, too, which is really nice. That's a really good combat trick, actually. That's, mm. that's a two power swing. Very good. And tormenting and, uh, voice. Just... Nice. Just a really quick uh, check back. Can everyone, uh, can everyone still see us? Okay, and still hear us. I I want to just do a quick technical housekeeping real quick. Everyone can hear us. Everyone can see our cards. All right, all that good stuff. So just uh, paste it into the chat if you can. Yeah, audio fine. Audio levels good. Oh, here we go. This one yeah. popped. Just see that? See how nicely that opens? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Welcome to Arena. Ooh. Uh, oh, these aren't even Arena codes. Oh, they're not? See, see no. I don't know why you I don't know why you open packs that way. You're opening like I, I don't even know what you're doing. What? It's it's efficient. <laughs> it's not. You're like, <laughs> I don't know what anyway. Uh, I'm just old school and I've ripped it. Alright, we have a crawling barons, colorless land, pay four mana, put two counters on it, and then you may have it become Oh, that's interesting. You don't have to make, become a creature instantly. That's cool. So, we got a oh, man me. land. Turn awesome. turn card from your graveyard to your hand. Love a regrowth effect. Actually, I need that for my tattoo of a deck. My casual tattoo of a deck. <laughs> uh, Goma fought a vanguard. When it attacks, target creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the number of warriors you control can't block this turn. More party type shenanigans. Yeah, it's a party guy. Uh, ooh, <laughs> target player mills two cards. I'm gonna get there. So, <laughs> so, so, so three mana six six can't attack or block unless an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. This boy is thick. <laughs> three mana six six goes into any deck too, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, return to absolutely. Target card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, more recursion. If the spell is kicked, return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Heck yeah. That's pretty good, actually. This is just value stuff right here. I need to get a Black Legend now. Um, <laughs> counter target creature or Planeswalker spell. You use four sp uh, you spell period, so creature, Planeswalker. Uh, oh, if they have eight or more cards in their graveyard, they have to get to scry too. Nice. You see that new card where it says, new creature, it says if you scry, you just draw cards instead? Yes, that new Sphinx. There's... There's plenty of spoiler talk going to happen about a particular Lotus, so we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so. broken wings, oh. uh, naturalized plus kill a creature of flying. That's getting in a green deck all day. Yeah. Um, when it enters the battlefield, attach it to a creature control. That's nice. Oh, uh, which equipment again? It's just a. It gets plus one plus one and then equip for three. Cost one mana. Yeah. Utility. And it's night. the one that auto equips when it enters, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, another combat trick. Nice. Uh, whenever you cast a kick spell, it becomes a five five until end of turn. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right. 
See, that's a, stop stop opening it like like a crazy person. <laughs> open it open it like a normal human, not a robot pretending to be a human. Look. Oh, we got an arc of the Miria. <laughs> mm. Nice. That is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna put this uh, straight in my blood pod deck now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna play it anyways. Like it's a three minute two three. Yeah, Flyer. it's just a good card. I mean, it's a fantastic card. Uh, even but I mean, I don't format. know if that's what you want to do, what you're going to want to end up doing with your deck. Oh, I don't know. What I'm doing with this deck all matters on uh, what commander I open. Exactly. Got a protection spell. Uh, each player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Nice. Oh, there's an another... Uh, that's cool. Ooh, what is this thing? Landfall. Creatures control the plus one, plus one, total to turn. Interesting. I don't know if there's a lot of tokens in this deck. No, there's Subtle Strike. Oh, Quip Creature gets flying. That's going to be huge, I think. I mean, if you saw some of the stuff that was cracked yesterday, there is a lot of beefy boys in Ikoria and from the Golos deck from M20. But I didn't see too terrible many evasion ones, like flyers and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, just giving evasion to your biggest guy is going to be really yeah. good. So even before like we open some our little next value pack, let's, creature. Yep. So before we go any something. further, we're already getting a ton of stuff about the new Commander Lotus. So let's take a quick two-minute intermission and talk about it. So for those of you who don't know, there is a card that just got spoiled, and it is called what is it called again? Lotus something. Uh, Black Lotus for your Commander. Yeah, it's called Black Lotus for your TM. Commander. There it is. That's the actual name on the card. Oh, and basically what it is, is it's a zero-costing artifact. You can tap, sack it, add three mana of any one color. That can only be used to cast your Commander, which is absolutely bonkers. So my initial impressions of this, uh, and obviously we'll have Zach uh, tell him what he thinks as well, but my initial impressions of this are obviously... In the right deck, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So we were talking about this just before we went live. We talked about how Goto is absolutely going to love it. You know, there's absolutely no reason it's not going to be a, an instant staple in Goto. Um, and a bunch of the other ones are going to like it too. But it's not an auto include in like every single deck. Um, so for example, there's going to be some where you're just not going to want to use it. Like this isn't a replacement for Lion's Eye Diamond, you know. Like, this isn't going to help you with your bomber man combos, or it's not going to help you with your breach lines, but it is going to help you power out your commander early. So anything that is very commander-centric is going to love this card. Um, we talked about Kenrith. We yep. talked about Goto. We yep. talked about Yisan. I mean, a T1 Yisan. Yeah. Oh, Turn one so, so good. Yeah, T1 Selvala. I mean, just, oh, there's so, so much potential in this card, so... Before I, you know, before I keep rambling anymore, Zach, what are your impressions on it? I mean, the the commanders that, like you said, that want this really want it. Anything that's aggressive, anything that wants to get their commander out and like synergize. I mean, Najila. We even say Najila. Turn one Najila. Why not? Like yeah. plus protection. Like okay, what well, uh, stupid stupid game? You know, uh, the 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 this this card is absurd. Uh, it's just gonna, it's gonna like, you know, the Godos and the Gitrogs and the Najilas are just gonna be that much better uh, with this card in their deck. While while yeah. decks like Blood Pod, for instance, uh, is not gonna be very good with it. You know, you're not trying to power out a Tana. You're not really trying to power out a Timna. You're trying to land an Archon of him. I guess you can't even land. You, like you just want to turn like turn two Archon of Amaria, and you can't yeah. even you can't cast Archon with with this card. Yeah, and Lotus isn't going to be able to do that. Yeah, like, Krom, you know, powering out T2 Kroms and stuff like that is going yeah. to be absolutely fantastic, of course. Um, and all of these things that really love to have their commanders out. Uh, Thrasios yeah. decks are going to love it, you know, just o because... Omar, Omar in chat said, you know, turn one, Augustine the fourth, greater, uh, oh, that, that yes. guy. Like, why not, you know? Yeah, it's, T1 it's... Urza. I mean, absolutely fantastic card yeah. um i think this thing is, i think this card will probably be pretty good in tassiger as well it's it's four mana for to cast your tassiger by itself yeah like that's just so good it's so good. uh lotus and elsha probably not i mean you want to cast elsha but she's three colors so she's still going to be hard to power out early you might be able to get a, a uh, really good elsha one maybe t2 mana? is elsha five mana 
she is four mana. But she's three colors. Yeah. If it was so, if it was like two colorless and like three colors, like probably. Just because it pays yeah. for more than half of the commander. Yeah. Anything any so, any commander that's got two or three colorless mana in it, this like this probably wants it in the deck. Yeah. So when we start to get super like like Kenrith is a five color commander, Golos is a five color commander, but they don't have really restrictive casting costs. So even though those things are not, you know, those are still five color decks, they're still gonna love this Lotus. So it's gonna right. be absolutely fantastic for those kind of things. Um yeah, yeah and uh Turn Justin in Lotus. chat says Oh, Elsha is five. You're right. You're absolutely... You guys are right. Uh, so, yeah, I thought she was five. Yeah, so just... Uh, yeah, turn one, get rog is fantastic. Yeah. Turn one, turn two, get rog. Um, yeah, and people are saying, oh, well, right now it's already like $150 on Karm Kingdom. That's... That's... No. No, that's nutty. No. That's... The, I don't know if it's going to be... And I don't know if it's going to stay that. I think they're just cashing in on a lot of hype right now. That's all it so, is. It got spoiled today. Yeah. Like, it's nothing but hype. And yeah, it got spoiled like an hour ago or something, like like only like an hour or two ago. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing it be a hundred fifty dollars. I'm not seeing this being better than Mana Crypt. You know, I guess oh, maybe no. that's a hot take. I don't know, but Mana Crypt can pay for anything. You know, this can only be your commander. Um, so, is it going to be a, You know, is it going to be cost as much as a Mana Crypt? That's I don't know if it's going to stay at that price point. But I'm also not an MTG finance speculator. So I really, I'm not the authority to say on something like that. Well, so. I mean, you think about the card in this terms, like not only do competitive players want it, every single other player in the format wants it because it's just great for everybody. You have a point there. So yeah, it all could the be a $150 players... card. It very well could be, but I wouldn't bank on it being that expensive. Uh, at least for very long, like it'll probably like people are gonna say one hundred fifty dollars, and it's gonna plummet to like fifty dollars, and then this set's gonna go out of printing, and it's slowly gonna climb up. Like that's usually what happens with cards like this. Yep, that's exactly right. I agree with you. Uh, I could see it. I mean, I could see it being expensive. Don't get me wrong; oh, yeah. it's a fantastic card. Uh, oh, any fast man, I don't care what its restriction is, usually just ends up climbing in price. I remember in Dominaria. <laughs> uh, Mox, Am Mox Amber was a like it was like it was a five dollar card and yep. sure enough it's you know it's hitting the 30 20 30 plus range now and I mean it's just because I mean there's fast mana is just always so good um hey with that so, with that new zero mana red guy as your partner commander like mox amber just becomes mox ruby now so hey, yeah ooh. mox amber is mox ruby now because that's zero partner commander yeah exactly so that's it's really like cool it's too. like the it, it's like you know what happens with like cards like bizarre baghdad uh, as an example like that card was not good until dredge was printed right mm -hmm. so a lot of the a lot of cards are going to go way up in value because something new is printed that gets insane with it yeah um and i also will say that there's there's going to be an arcane signet effect with this because this will be the first time it's printed and uh arcane signet was is a it really is a really really good card but when it first came out in those brawl decks that was the only place that it was, you know, it was the only place that was available. And so they were commanding, you know, a pretty decent chunk of change for a, a, a mana rock. Oh, yeah. Um, but now since they've been printing them more and more, you know, they're starting to be a reasonable value again. Yeah, they're like five bucks. They're probably going to go down to like $2 a card, honestly. Exactly. After this and, and that, it, that's a perfect price point for a card like that. You know, it's like the price of a Felwar Stone. It's like the... Yeah, the, exactly. It's like the price of uh, like most two mana rocks, you know, the, the Talismans. You know, around two dollars. That's a totally fair price for those cards and what they do. Yeah. So, do I think this thing will be five dollars? No, <laughs> I don't think no. it'll ever be five dollars. To be to be hundred percent honest with you, um, as long as commander but... exists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, that's that's our kind of two cents on it. But definitely in the chat, let us know what you think about it. Um, do you think it? Uh, some people are saying it should be banned. I personally disagree with that. But, um, you know, some people are, there's a lot of hot takes going on, so. Uh, but. Yeah, let's not get in the subject of bannings and things like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking about bannings, everyone's losing their minds over opposition agent, which we're not going to talk about right now. Okay, let's get back to the. We're going to get back to our, our, our cracking yeah, that was a, That's that what was we're going to get in. Uh, Lotus talk. <laughs> 
All right. Yep. So I got a new pack here. Open a foil here. Nice shiny card. Tazim Raptor. Three minute two two flyer. ETB return a land to your hand. Uh, oh, is this a land? Oh, this is a dual land. Sweet. Black white dual land. Nice. Cool. Was it red white you said? Black white. Ah, oh, black white. Cool. Comes into play untapped. Ew. Uh, ooh, Relic Alien. What does this do? Whenever I cast an instant or sorcery or, or a wizard spell, put a charge counter. Two, tap it, remove all counters, and deal damage to the target creature. That's cool. Good, cool little build around for a spell slinger deck. Uh, one mana removal, CMC two or less. If it was kicked, destroy that creature or planeswalker. Oh, uh, that's just four mana sorcery speed, kill anything. That's going into every black deck ever. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Two three for three flying, uh, or two two for three flying. Cast an instant sorcery, uh, or a wizard spell. You may draw a card if you do discard a card. Sweet, and it's a wizard itself. Not bad, not bad. Uh, two mana destroy target creature or enchantment, and opponent controls. You lose life. Okay, that's fine. More removal. That's actually that's a really good one. Yeah, the ability to target removal enchantment in black is pretty sweet. Uh, smite the monsters. This card's yeah. gonna be insane against Mike. <laughs> Which one? Insane. Smite the monsters. Destroy target creature card for Yes. Another broken wings. Mesa. Mesa Lynx. Ooh, that's a cool looking dread worm. Landfall. Uh, gains indestructibles in a turn. Not that exciting. Um, and just the battlefield. Scry X, where X is the number of creatures in your party. Ooh, with that new with that new mono blue, is it a Sphinx where you just draw for every time you scry? Yes. Ah, oh, don't even get me started about that Sphinx. Uh, for those <laughs> of you who don't know, I run Unesh Cryo Sphinx Sovereign as a casual deck, and that Sphinx just ah oh, just made me made me weep tears of joy. <laughs> okay, okay. Another little checklist card. Ooh, that's a cool looking rare. Oh, we got our first legendary. It's mono red. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so we have Morog, Fury of Akum. Uh, yeah. Four and two red for a six six Minotaur Warrior. Uh, each creature you control gets plus one plus zero oh for each time it has attacked this turn. Landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's the if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase at the beginning of your combat. Untap all creatures you control. Oh, wait. I remember there was a really weird thing with this card when you do... Uh, like, for, like, the landfall ability. Yep. Like, if you do it on the first or second main phase. So, it, it is... It's all, so, Morag is actually really cool because a lot of people tried to bust it, but they kept missing the if it's your main phase clause in there. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely shenanigans you can do. I mean, not in the set by itself, but extra combats are never a bad thing. Extra combats are awesome. I'm not really looking to have this guy helm a deck just because it's mono red, and I want to be able to play these like cool black and white removal spells uh, if I can. But like, he's definitely sweet if I if I do get mm -hmm. to end up playing him. Uh, Spiked Hazard deals one damage to any target. If a permanent dealt damage would die, exile it instead, and it's a land. Cool. Vine Gecko. Two minute two two. Uh, the first kick spell you cast costs one less to cast. Whenever you cast a kick spell, put a counter on the gecko. Not bad. Yep. Uh, up to two target creatures each get plus X plus X where X number of creatures in your party. More combat tricks. And some more of the same sort of stuff. I don't think any of this is too exciting. Another end of the row. Don't need more of those. All right, let's keep on keeping on. Yep. Uh, and while you're opening that pack, uh, someone in chat says, what legendary uh, in Commander Legends are you excited to build a deck with? And anything for you, Zach, yet? Ooh. Um, nothing so far. Probably that Probably that uh, zero mana red guy. Try and do something cool with him. But as I of like right the idea now, of adding a red color identity to the partners that already exist. I think there's going to be a yeah. lot of cool design space that's going to come from that. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm waiting for the rest of the set to be spoiled. But as of right now... Oh, wait. Yeah. No, there is there is one. There's a, a, a mono green guy. Sorry. Whenever you cast, whenever a permanent comes into play, I think it's permanent, uh, you reveal a card from your hand that's like shares a CMC or less. And then you get to mm -hmm. put that into play. Oh, that, that seems sweet. Um, yeah, I I think there's uh, the uh, ah, I forget his name, but he he basically gives you overrun each turn. He's uh, 
Uh, he's got partner as well, and he's mono green. I think that'll be a really good casual commander. Um, uh, Kamal. Kamal, that's his name. Oh, Kamal, Fist of Crozier? Yeah. Or it's not Fist of Crozier, but it's Kamal. A different Kamal? But it's a, it's, it's, it's a new Kamal. Um, but beyond that, I honestly, I want to see what I can do to break Kark. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see about Storm Kark somehow. Kark the Thumbless. Kark's I want to see sweet. if there's something we could do with that. That will be really, really cool. Okay, we got a sweet blue rare here. Inscription of Insight. Choose one of the spells, kick, choose any number instead. So it's four to play normally, sorcery, and then you kick it for an additional two in a blue, so eight mana. Return two creatures to their owner's hand. Uh, scry two, then draw two, and target player creates an XX blue illusion where X is the number of cards in their hand. This card is insane. That uh, is really good. What's its kicker cost again? Two blue, blue. So for eight mana, you get to bounce two creatures, scry two, draw two, and then make a an XX blue illusion where X is the number of cards in your hand. Yikes! That's really that good. is an ins that does a lot for eight mana. It's also eight mana. <laughs> so yeah, there's but that, we're gonna know. get to eight mana. <laughs> uh, um, it's one of the same uncommons. Oh, do I have a wrath here? Two damage each creature instead. Yeah, three mana nice. instant speed cinderclasm. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cinderclasm. I don't know how great it'll be. Like, probably set some stuff up with that, though. Uh, I think in the earlies, early turns, it'll be good. Uh, I mean, you later can, set up, you can set up some stuff, like, out. when people, like, attack you or you attack them. Make, set up some, like, interesting blocks and then Cinderclasm them. Yep. I used to do that with a lot of those cards in, in Limited all the time. You can get some really yep. big blowouts. Probably a little more yep. difficult yep. in uh, Commander, though. Um... Well, it says ETB draw a card, so I'm in. And then you sacrifice a draw card. That's going into any deck I'm building. Uh, another one of my six, dude. Um, whenever a Pyroclastic Helion enters the battlefield and you return a land to its owner's hand, you control to its owner's hand. When you do, it deals two damage to each opponent. That's cool. That's not bad. I, so he just gets extra landfalls. Uh, ooh, destroy yeah. target land. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, search the library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tapped, do drag. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna color hose <laughs> uh Folger up with that card. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh my god, this thing is terrible. Stupid. Can we go back to the, the cardboard packs, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's the place the plastic too hard for you to open. <laughs> It is. The glue is too tough. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a glass pool mimic. Uh, Enter's battlefield is a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue, and it can come into play as a land. Sweet. Clone my, clone my best creature. Uh, ooh, nice. Another equipment here. Got a relic X. Two to play. Uh, Enter's battlefield. It automatically attaches to a, a creature I control. Clip creature gets plus one, plus one. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two, plus one. Instead, I'm in. Um, whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one token. And then another target, uh, Cleric gains ooh, life link until end of turn. Nice. That's cool for getting some token stuff going. Uh, yeah. It's just a battlefield. It was kicked. All creatures able to block target creature this turn do so. That's really cool for like alpha striking somebody. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. 1-1 one, one Death Touch for 1 in green. Making every green deck ever. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the top 5 cards of your library. and reveal a creature card from among them. Put it in your hand. Put the rest of the body in the library in a random order. If you didn't, put a card in your hand this way. Draw a card. Ooh! I like that a lot. That's like zero that downside. Like you never, yeah. you never whiff. That's uh, really good. Flying creature for that. And another Nahiri's Binding. Okay. All right, uh, Christian in chat says, in the EDH Boxing League, are you able to change your commanders as you open new packs? The answer to that is yes, if you open one. Um, so now that also means that you have to pivot your color identity if you open it. But yeah, but basically since the commander is one of your 100, that is a card that you could absolutely swap in the Boxing League. 
put our legend so, up here. So, so for example, if Zach ends up with just the uh, extra combat landfall guy, this is only legendary so far. Well, if I only end up with that, good news, I opened a red mythic. <laughs> got there. Got there. We got Shatter Skull Smashing. It's red, red, and X for a sorcery. Uh, scatter, skull, scatter Skull... Yeah, Scatter Skull Smashing deals X damage... Uh, divide as you choose among... A di oh my god, Zach, talk. Divide it as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is six or more, uh, it deals twice that damage instead. And it can come into play as an untapped land if you pay three life. Sweet. That's right, yeah. Sweet. I mean, I keep forgetting that Zendikar has those like those like flip dual lands and yeah. the ones that can enter, the ass lands... Those are actually going to be really good for you. For they are going to be nice. I mean, hey, they're dual lands. If they're my uh, color identity, they're in the deck 100%. And, like, the yeah. spells that are just lands as well. So that just boosts my land land count by a significant amount, too. Yeah. It, there's there's basically no opportunity cost. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Exactly. You get to keep some sketchier hands. Oh, did you see that this new Pioneer deck where it's 80, 80 cards, no lands? <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I saw the video for it. I just need to watch it. Oh, it's spicy. It is a spicy meatball. <laughs> um, so here we go. We have an iridescent horn beetle. Four and a green for a three four. At the beginning of your end step, create a one one green insect creature token. For each plus one plus one counter you put on a creature's under your control this turn. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not in love with that. Yeah. One man enchantment. If it was kicked for two and a blue, create a two two flyer. Whenever you cast a kick spell, create a 2-2 flyer. Hey, that's awesome. Hey, that's pretty good. I don't know why you would ever not kick this card, in all honesty, because, like, there's not a whole <laughs> lot of, like, low-costing kick spells. Not in this set. There's not, like, a whole lot of, you like, know, kick for a single color. Yeah, the, like, the kickers into the are Royal is, like, really big. the best, you know, because you kick it for just two more. Uh, yeah. see here. Myriad Captain, three and a white for a flying vigilance, 1-1. One, one. When a captain enters the battlefield, put a counter on on it for each creature in your party. Not bad. Plus one, plus one counter synergies and flyers and stuff. Um, gives creatures with counters menace. Costs one less for each creature in your party. Seven five is going to be big in this format for us. Yep. Um, three mana ATP mill somebody for two. Okay. Got some mill, mill action going on. Ooh, we've got a red equipment here. Uh, ETB automatically attach it and creature mm -hmm. gets plus two plus O. Oh. Um, Molten Blast. Ooh, we got a cool card at the end. Ooh, McKinney Ox. It's cool looking. Cool looking art. Okay. I think I'm gonna start speeding this up here a little bit. Yeah, I think you've gone through a decent amount of the comments. I think we're getting an idea. I, we're, I need to, I want you to open uh, a Legendary. That's what I want to see. Speaking of Legendary, I have a Tazri here. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> we did it, boys. We got all we five did colors. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sweet. So, oh, we well, did that it. was great. We did it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. So, so right now, you might be on the party train. Probably. I mean, there's no reason not to. In all honesty, no reason not yeah. to. Not to have. I mean, because they're, they're all the creatures are already intrinsically, you know, clerics and wizards and warriors and stuff. Uh, rogue. Two mana, one three flying flash. Whenever one or more rogues you control attacks, each mana, each opponent mills two cards. That mill strategy is coming to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> You're doubling down on the old mill strategy. Oh, you, you know I am. <laughs> you know I am. <laughs> oh, jeez. Repeatable mill, that's how you get there. <laughs> okay. Got a copy token. Ooh, got a foil. Uh... Anti-cognition, uh, one blue instant, counter target. Oh, we've opened this already. Yeah. Counter, counter something. Ooh, Skyclave Apparition. One white white for 2-2. Two, two. When Skyclave Apparition enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non-land token permanent you don't control with CMC 4 or less when it leaves the battlefield. The exile card's owner creates an XX where X is that CMC of that spell. Okay. That card is so good. It was it was a sleeper. Nobody paid attention to it. So you exile, and it's exiled forever. This isn't yeah. this isn't fiend hunter. This isn't O ring. It is yeah. gone. 
you know? And and that means that, oh, yeah, they're going to get an XX or whatever, but, you know, who cares, you know? You're exiling that problem permanent for, for good, which is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's always great. Uh, I got a five-minute threaten effect whenever this guy deals combat damage to a player, exile top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Cool, that's card advantage right there. We got top X cards of your library where X is three plus the number of creatures in your party, and then put three of those cards into your hand. What? Put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order. Wow. That's actually going to be really good that's, for you. Is it instant? <laughs> oh, it's sorcery. Yeah, like if I do the whole party thing with Tazri, yeah, it's going to be great. Okay. More of the same. Yep. The Skyclave, it was a really hot pull. Uh, I don't know if the Emiria was as hot, because I don't know if you're going to want to... You might want to slow things down, I don't know. But I mean, we'll it's just, just a beater. It's a 2-3 flying beater, you know. It's a 2-3 is a good blocker as well. Um, <laughs> I, saw... um <laughs> I don't think you saw what they brewed yesterday. Look, dude, <laughs> it's, it's a good blocker, all good right? Blocker. It, it attacks, it protects, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it protects, it attacks, but also it all slow right. down the stack. Shadow's Verdict, three black black, XL all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield, and all creatures and planeswalkers with CMC uh, three or less from all graveyards. Okay, sort of like a mini Wrath. Yep, Wrath in an Exile, yep. Choose target creature, you lose two life, and so in the turn that creature ga uh, gains, when this creature dies, return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Nice. Is, is that an instant or a sorcery? That's instant, yeah. Oh, that's even better. That's good. Yeah, that's going to be sweet. That's going to be sweet. Uh, oh, it dies. Okay. We've got a Bushfire Elemental. Green, red for a 1-1 one, one haste. Uh, can't be blocked by creatures power 2 or less. Landfall. Uh, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until the turn. Cool. And we already got one of those guys. Um, I don't think. We've got a Disenchant. That could be decent. Always good. Ooh, 4 mana, 3, 4 landfall. Deals 1 damage to each opponent. Could be interesting. Tazri landfall. Dab. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nice. I think that one finally opened the correct way. way it was meant to. You mean the wrong way? So it's, it's, not, it's not sealed right? We got a foil uncommon. Umara mystic. One blue red for a 1-3 flyer. Then you cast an instant sorcery. It gets plus 2 plus 0 until under turn. Lotus Cobra! Woo! Oh, Lotus Cobra. Kidding. Get in my deck. <laughs> oh, Lotus Cobra, so good. Yeah, Solemnity Vision. Look at the top six cards of your library. We reveal an insert sorcery from among them. Put it in your hand. The rest in the bottom of the library in any order. Cleric's Life Bond. Uh, white and black uh, for 2-2. Two, two. Whenever another cleric enters the battlefield, gain a life. Some cool life gain synergy is going on here. I like that Solemnity Vision, actually. That, that thing's uh, pretty deep. Yeah, it's instant speed as well, so that'll be mm -hmm. nice. It depends on how many instant And I think it's sorcery. a I think the flip's a land, right? It's a flip land. Yeah, it's also uh, a land. It's also a land. Yeah. Like why not? Uh whenever you gain life for the first time, put a counter on this cleric. Not bad. Uh cleric deals damage to a player. The player mills a card. Hey yo. <laughs> mill strategy, baby, mill strategy. <laughs> I swear to god, I hope you go mill strategy and just get just get us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it might be able to happen. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to happen. That's why I'm trying to happen. convince you to do I'm it. I'm just trying but... to get to eight. All those, all those trigger, all, all those cards trigger off of eight cards. So, yep. Threshold. Uh, so, Bruno in chat asked, "What are the commanders that have been chosen so far?" Um, so, Folger opened and is running with Golos. Um, Mike, uh, God, what is it? Broco uh, is the one he's running. It's the one that's in. I think it's in Sultai or Epsian Colors. I can't remember. Anyway, I think I believe he's running Brokos. Uh, and right now, Zach is on the Tazri plan until he opens yeah. on that. <laughs> I mean, so. even, like, even like I said, Omneth is not that great. It's really not. Like, you're not getting multiple landfall triggers, so you're not adding that mana to your mana pool. You're mainly just gaining life. <coughs> yeah, you're going to have to really double down on the whole commander... <coughs> Excuse the me. The commander landfall plan, yeah. Yeah, it's not as good. <coughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, we got our foil right here. Arc Priest of Iona. It's a white for a star two. Human Cleric. Its power is equal to the number of creatures in your party. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and flying until end of turn. 
Our rare yeah. here is ooh a legend. We got the blue black legend here, Merf Merfolk Rogue. Three blue oh, black yeah. for a four four flash. Uh, pay two uh, blue and a black. Return and unblock attacking rogue. You control this owner's hand and then put. Oh, so it's nin nin rogue j uh, Merfolk Jitsu. <laughs> it's rogue Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, for, the, for this creature. Fish j fish Jitsu. I yeah, see. fish Jitsu. <laughs> The deadliest of all fish styles. <laughs> uh, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you may put a permanent card from that player's graveyard on the battlefield. Mill's back in the house! <laughs> <laughs> mill strategy, baby! Dude, mill I'm gonna strategy. mill some thick creatures from Mike and then just reanimate them. I swear, you know, that's actually looking a little better every, every card you pull. <laughs> oh. uh, this is a warrior... Um, Plus, uh, Lord. God, I got there. Uh, ooh, ETB draw a card. Great in every deck. Ooh, yep. tap target creature, draw a card. Love it. And another one of these cool little, like, full art guys. Not very good, though. All Which right. one is it? Uh, it's uh, two mana for a 1 3 landfall gain of life. Actually, that might not be too bad with uh, some of the stuff that says, like, when you gain a life, you know? Yeah, you might have to look into that a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I don't know how aggressive, because I think gaining life might be good, considering what our pod is right now. Because uh, I think those beats that's coming from Mike is, is, is actually scaring me. It yeah, it could be it could be it could be good to help counter counteract that, but also like there are cards in here that say when you like gain a life, like make a token or gain a life and put counters on stuff. Yeah. Uh we got and the so black white commander though, the core cleric, three three lifelink. Uh when this creature or another cleric control dies, return to our cleric with lesser converted mana cost from the graveyard to the battlefield. Sweet. Nice. What's the name of it again? Uh, Ovra Skyclave Herophant? Hierophant? Yeah, Herophant. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, we got two mana four spike. Gonna get somebody with that. Um, oh, that's good. Six mana five four haste. Cost less for each creature in your party. Ooh, we got a Rakdos equipment. Gets plus one plus one for each creature in your party and gains menace. That is huge. That's really good. That is Tazer. really good. That makes me want to do... Do party stuff with Tazra even more. Like, imagine swap, like equipping up this Seagate Colossus. It's just going to get, you know, plus 4, plus 0, oh, and Menace. Just attacking as an 11-5. Oh, so good. So, um, in chat they ask, uh, will you guys be sharing decks anywhere once everyone has opened their boxes? We absolutely will. Yep. Uh, we're going to get all the deck lists. Um, and as the Boxing League progresses, we'll be opening more packs, and we'll be sharing our updated deck lists from each of those pack openings with the swaps we were making. So yeah, you we will, you guys will see all of that. Oh, got another foil here. Uh, Kazul's Fury, two and a red instant, an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a creature. Uh, deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. Cool. Ooh, How got much another, is it to cast? Uh, two and a red. Two and a red to, to fling something. Yeah. Uh, we got a we got a blue red dual land as our rare. Not bad. Nice. Very good. Not bad. Uh oop uh counter non creature spell and then they have to pay X or X where X is the number of creatures in your party. Cool. Yep. Uh ooh, green, white, vigilant two three. Tap to put a basic land onto the battlefield or tap to return a basic land to the owner's hand. Not bad. Uh, when land enters the battlefield, it gets plus two, plus two on the turn. Real medium. And yep. then, any, any new commons? It's a kicked guy with flying, gets counters. Okay. Keep on rolling. How many packs are we in right now? Uh, we're just over a third of the way through the box. Nice. I don't know how many packs that is. It's like... 36. Whatever a third of 36 is. I'm not going to do the math. Uh, Coral Helm Chronicle, Chronicler, <laughs> two and a blue for a Merfolk Wizard, party stuff, for a 2-2, two -two. whenever you cast a kick spell, draw a card, then discard a card. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, and reveal a card with kicker from among them, put it in your hand, the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. That's cool. There's like, yeah, not bad. There's like, a, oh, so like, so my is gonna be a party deck, plus milling, plus kicking, plus counters. Plus milling. 
<laughs> oh, don't forget about Rogue Jitsu or Fish yeah, Jitsu. Yeah, Fin Jitsu. Fin Jitsu. <laughs> Kevin Connolly, thank you for that. Fin Jitsu. Fin Jitsu. <laughs> Oh, so good. Uh, ooh, I opened a Harrow. Well, not as good as Harrow, but uh, two and a green uh, instant. Sack a land, search your library for up to two basic lands. Put on the battlefield tapped. Mana fixing, baby. Always good. That's honestly what I'm scared of the most with my box, because the mana fixing in Dominaria was not great. Yeah. <laughs> it's not great. We got a colorless guy here that is... Uh, he is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard, which is sweet. Yeah, he basically and, fills your party. Yeah, yeah, and he also two mana to filter to any color as well, so mana fixing for Tazri as well. That card is that's, insane for this deck. Yeah, that's actually really good. I just, yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, we got a cleric here. Nullist, uh, Null Priest of Oblivion, one in a black. Uh, kicker for three in a black. It's a menace life link 2 1. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return to a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Love it. Reanimation, baby. That's good. Yep. Uh, we got a plus two, plus two anthem for five. It's also a land, which is sweet. Yep. Um, I don't think we've seen this guy yet. Oh, we got a bunch of new uncommons. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals a number of cards from their hand, equal number of creatures in your party. Sweet. You choose one of those cards, and that player discards that card. Dude, I've got like two ways to make people discard cards. That's insane. And you have some cards that allow you to reanimate. Oh! Oh, this card's nuts! Alright, four blue-white. Cost one less for each creature in your party. Instant speed, gain three life, draw three cards. Oh! Oh, so good. That's really good. Alright, let's keep on. I'm not even going to thumb through the commons anymore. I don't think there's a point. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot with the commons. I, I would just say, let's take a look at the rares and stuff. Alright. Uh, actually, token, land, uh, Feldar Retreat. Ooh, this one's sweet. Landfall, make a 2-2, uh, creature, or put yep. a counter, uh, on each creature you control in the game Vigilance turn to turn. That yep, Feldar really Retreat's good. actually super good. That's a really good card, um, uh, for what we're doing. Uh, yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, whenever you cast a kick spell, scry two, and it's a 4-4 four, four, flyer for five. All right. I think this deck is probably shaping up to be a lot of just, like, random, like, good landfall stuff. And then kick spells plus party. Oh, got yeah, the And mill. Hello. Dude, that's, a, that's like, plan A mill that was assumed. <laughs> <laughs> plan A is mill. Plan B is party. Yeah. <laughs> we got Kaza Royal Chaser. Blue red for a 1-2 flying haste. It's a human wizard. Also a legendary. So we got our... Fifth legend for this box so far. Nice. Tap it. The next instant sorcery spell you cast costs X less for X the number of wizards you control as this ability resolves. That is really nice. It's all right. I mean, but I mean, I guess you are on the party mechanic, so you are going to have your share of wizards. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It would probably depend on how many instants and sorceries I have. I did just mm -hmm. open that yep. really big, thick blue spell, but it already gets like... Like, it's basically making that blue-white spell cost just blue-white. Excuse me, blue-white mm -hmm. to gain three life and draw a card. Gain three, draw three? Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, gain three, draw three. Uh, spell costs one less for each creature in your party. It's a 5-5 five, five Vigilance for six. That's okay. That's good. Hey, I like, I like creatures that have Vigilance. That's a very underrated ability in Commander, I think. It really is. It's a very good ability. Yep. People are all about, like, Trample and Double Strike. Ooh, we got a Foil Mountain. That's nice. Uh, nimble Trap Finder, one of the blue 2-1. It's a rogue. Uh, it can't be blocked if you had another creature enter your party this turn. At the beginning of combat, uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card at end of turn. Mm. Hey, yo. Yep, Nimble Trap Finder. So good for that. Uh, it does require the full party, which I'm not in love with, yeah. but the uh, the ability to basically have your stuff be unblockable if you can put it together is and draw cards, which mm -hmm. is even yeah. better. Oh, two mana sorcery speed, de sorcery speed, deal four damage to a creature, planeswalker. Like that's going in. That's going in easily. Yeah. Removal, removal, so hard to come by. Like good removal, you just gotta play. Good it all. removal is the is the key there. Good removal. Yeah, you just gotta like play it all. I think because you only get one. It's not like you can play. Ooh, we got a scoot swarm. <laughs> oh yes, scoot swarm, so good. I got that a card sweet landfall so deck here too, actually. That card is so good. 
Um, what is this? Land oh, they equip. Landfall gets plus two, plus two in the turn. Eh, that's an okay. That's just an okay equipment. Eh. Yeah. I like the static abilities that just do, just go. Like that, that, that black... That just are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... The, the black, red menace, and then plus four, plus O, oh, basically. Really nice. Oh, destroy all non-land yeah. permanents. All right, we got we have a Ooh. reset button for for eight mana. <laughs> oh, is that all? That's only eight oh, mana. <laughs> oh, dude, oh, I got God. a five color land for my uh, party guys. Um, oh, sweet. Oh wait, wait, add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast cleric uh, or activate the ability of a cleric. Okay, so it activates abilities and cast uh, party party guys. Is it cleric, rogue, wizard, and yeah. warrior? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 but only for only for those creature types, which is fine. That's that's fine. It helps activate Tazri, so that's good. We got yeah, another foil rare. We got an Aura Sky Skyclave Herophant. I already got one of the. Oh, a Shia! <laughs> we got a Shia! Oh, yes! Oh, oh Shia! What a bad foil rare plus and a Shia! <laughs> And it's a legend! This is insane! <laughs> oh, Ashaya. I, I completely forgot that that card was in this yeah. set! <laughs> it's so good! Let me, uh, let me fix this up a little bit. I wonder how well is it going to go into your party mechanic, though? Uh, I mean, are you going to hard pivot to green with Scoot Swarm it's now? Insane. And Lotus Cobra? It's insane! Ondu inversion plus Ashayas kills everything except my stuff because it says non land permanence. It's definitely going in. Oh, that's so good. That's that insane. Is good. Oh. That is an insane combo. <laughs> oh. My my 13 mana two card combo. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Got there, Dab. <laughs> Dab, Ryan, Dab. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that's really good. Man, that Ashaya changed everything. It really did. Oh, what a pack. Foil rare plus a mythic. Woo! Can't stage that. <laughs> okay. oh, man, else, that is we good. Here? We got a squad commander. Three and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. Squad commander into the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one white core for each creature in your party. Hey, yo. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, creatures you control will get plus one, plus one, indestructible until end of turn. Oh my the god! Indestructible's nice. This That's party, nice. this party deck is getting insane. Uh, six <laughs> mana. Each opponent loses four life, and you gain four life. I don't know. Could be oh, a land. Oh, very nice. Very nice. We got a green black kicker card. Enters the battlefield with three counters on it. If you kick it, and then whenever one or more counters are put onto a creature you control, if moss pit skeleton is in your graveyard, you may put it on the top of your library. Interesting. Ruin crab. Awesome. Mill strategy Ruin back crab. online, Yay. boys. It's back online. <laughs> back online. Mill strategy plan A. Wait, 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 Ryan, go back to that. No, no, put that back on there. Oh, I don't think people can see it. Well, I, what, not until I make them. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, yeah, that's 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 important enough for you to show everyone. <laughs> Everybody, Ryan, Ryan's got some delicious fried chicken. It's a fried chicken night, my friends. <laughs> Okay. Tasty stuff. I'm sure somebody wanted to take a photo of that. <laughs> it's it's a ritual. Every it time we stream, ritual. I it's have to I have to put my food on my my mat. Uh, we got a foil like extended art guy here, prowling felidar. Uh, two three for four vigilance. Land enters the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Hey oh. Nice. We have a four mana four four construct with kicker three. Uh, whenever it's kicked, it enters with a plus one, plus one counter out for each non-basic land my opponent's control. What up, Folger? Looking at you, bud. <laughs> that man pulled five He's got, like, fry temples. He did. Yesterday. He got all the temples and all the normal duels as well. Uh, so... I just can't believe he pulled all those. That was insane. Oh, man. When this thing becomes a target of a spell, sack it and create a number of one one colors constructs equal to... Uh, this creature's total power. That's really good. That is really it good. It starts uh, off as a 4-4 four, four for 4, and then if you kill it, I get 4 one ones. I mean, that's more resilient, which is nice for more blockers. Yeah. So, and I it mean, goes it's, great it's with colorless, my, so... Yeah, I kick it for 7, and then on 8, I cast my Wrath, and I have a bunch of <laughs> bunch of one ones. <laughs> well, that's actually a good point. Yeah, <laughs> come to think of it. Oh, Relic Axe. Okay, we got one of those, and we got one of those. 
Alright. What else is good? I guess maybe more multicolor insane I cards. I mean, if you pull an Omnath, I mean, you might want to pivot to Landfall if you get an I Omnath could. Both point. decks are there. Both decks are there. Ooh, got another kicker card. Mm -hmm. Inscription of Ruin. Two and a black kicker for two black black. Uh, if you kick it, you get to choose any number. So, target opponent, you get to make somebody discard two cards. Return target creature with CNC two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And destroy target creature with current burn mana cost three or less. Awesome. That, that is a very well-rounded card. It is. Um, and more of the same. I don't like this whole tarot thing. So much extra work. Come on. It's so much extra work, and you got two little scrap, scrappy boys to deal with. Oh, here right. we go. We got the black, we got the red white dual land now. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, I got the red white, the blue red, and the uh, black white one. Awesome. No black duplicates. White. Yep. No mm -hmm. duplicates. Um. That's some super good fixing, quite frankly. Yeah. Ooh, we got an anthem for for uh, party creatures. Plus X, plus nice. X for a number of creatures in your party. That could be good. That could be... Oh, that's actually... Uh, it could be good with all the tokens. Like, I make a surprising amount of tokens. Got another foil here. Marasa Sproutling. Two and a green for a 3-3. Three, three. Love it already. Kicker for one and a green. Even better. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it was kicked. Return turret card with kicker from my graveyard to my hand. Awesome. Ooh, we got a Leo, uh, Legion Angel. Two white, white for a 4 3 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, may reveal a card uh, you own outside. Named. Oh, it's just a flyer. Yep, yep, you got it. In, oh. our, in our format. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a 4 3 flyer for four, and it's a, it's a warrior, so I can't complain with that. I think uh, evasion's going to be one of your strategies. Oh, I nice. I opened, it, I opened an Oblivion Ring effect. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. Oblivion Ring effects are great. There's a surprising amount of, like, decent removal in this set, too. And I'm getting... Which I love me. Ooh, got the blue-green, uh, legendary creature. So, enters the battlefield with, uh, X plus one plus one counters on it. And then whenever you cast a kick spell, you may remove two plus one plus one counters from it. If you do copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy, that is pretty, pretty good. That is good. I agree. Oh, dude, self-mill strategy? Quick creature gets plus three, plus one. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, the black equipment that automatically equips, and if... Uh, oh, an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, the quick creature, quick creature gets plus three, plus one. Heck Yeah. I wasn't. I really wasn't in love with the worst threshold mechanic in this set. Yeah, it's because, a it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, it is. It is actually a lot. Yeah, Seven's it's, already it's a, a lot a for threshold. One. Like it really is, especially yeah. uh, like outside of like formats with fetch lands and like ponders and preordains and all that all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a Nighthawk Scavenger here. One black black for a Vampire Rogue. It's a one plus star three. <laughs> Flying Death Touch Life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1 plus star 3, not confusing at all. Uh, its power is equal to 1 plus a number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyards. More mill stuff. Okay. Oh, uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> it's, that, it's that, like, black Tarmogoyf kind of thing, is what that is. Yeah, it's a lot like a black Goyf. Not yeah. particularly great. I just deck so, for it, though, but I don't think it's as good as the other decks. Uh, oh, this thing's insane. Uh, one and a white for a 1-1 one, one human cleric. The beginning of combat on your turn. Put a counter on a creature you control. Heck yeah. That was actually a real sleeper card, in my opinion. Like, not a lot of people paid attention to it. Maybe because they thought it was too slow. But a bear that just makes all of your... Like, makes a creature grow every combat? I mean... I don't think that's bad. There, yeah, and there are, there are synergies here with, like, putting counters on creatures, you know, per turn and blah, blah, blah. So, like, that's a consistent counter on a creature. And in a game where we, ex like, expect this to go to, you know, turn 10, turn 15 or something like that. Well, 
I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, let's not lose our minds here. But <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm over, overstating it at all. Like these are going to be long games. I think. I, I don't think it'll be a turn three. Yeah, sure, I'll give you that. But man, turn fifteen. How bad do you think these decks are? Pretty bad. Uh, two black <laughs> okay. black instant. Uh, destroy a creature. This spell costs one less uh, to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands. Awesome. Huh. Just. Just unconditional removal, and it's a land. But if I'm oh, playing it for a land, I feel like I'm in a really bad spot. Um, already got that mill card. Already got that. Uh, ooh, brushfire elemental. Oh, already got that one. But we got the new the the cool artwork for it though. So nice. There's that. All right, we got our final three packs here, and then we got the don't forget about this little sleeper expedition box <sighs> topper. Yeah. Get myself a. <laughs> Can I open a scalding turn? Can I get a fetch land after all? <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, oh man, you'd be rocking the oh, land so hard. We opened a Nissa. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, I uh, got the Nissa. Uh, landfall, get a lo loyalty counter, plus one. Uh, make a land to 3-3 three, three with haste until end of, and minutes until end of turn. <clears throat> Minus five, put a creature card with CMC. Oh, the converted mana cost less or equal to the number of lands you control onto uh, the battlefield. From your hand or graveyard, and it gets two counters. That's insane. That's, That's insane. Really That's going into the deck easily. And more of the same uncommons and commons. Oh, what a great pull there. So that's our mm -hmm. third mythic of the box. I mm. think is on par. No, I'm pretty two... sure you're. I'm pretty sure you're deeper than that at this point. Um, Ashaya. I got Tazri, Shia, Tazri and Nissa. Torog. Guy, uh, there was also a mythic, uh, not a board wipe, but another oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah, the, this red mythic. So that's four mythics. Yeah. Plus the Nisa, isn't that five? That's four. <laughs> oh no, this uh, Morogs are mythic too. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, Morogs. Wow, this yeah. box is insane. This is yeah. a five mythic box and two foil rares. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see here. We got a Sphinx Wizard. Uh, Master of the Winds, 2 blue blue for a 1 4 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, draw 2, discard a card. Alright, love it. Draws cards. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you cast an insert sorcery or a wizard, you may have you may switch its power and toughness until end of eh. turn. Nice. <clears throat> and nothing new there. So, uh, Giermir, uh, Giermir in chat says, So cool to watch you all open boxes and make a deck out of them. Your channel was the one that got me into Commander, and it's become my favorite format. Super glad to hear that. I'm so happy that you're enjoying it. We love this format, too. So, And we're going to see how this Boxing League does. We're really excited about it, because we are just... We're pulling some crazy good stuff. We are. So. We are. I'm excited for your box, in all honesty. Your box is going to be insane. <laughs> I mean, we've had just three amazing boxes, which just means that mine is going to be absolute trash. That is just my <laughs> no, luck. No. I'm gonna, I'm only gonna pull one legendary. It's gonna be Squee the Immortal. No way. I'm gonna have I'm to make dude, a mono you get to red play Yova, What more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's our final rare for the box. The here he is Litho Forming Red Red X Sorcery. Sacrifice X lands for each land sacrifice this way. Draw a card. You may play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control into the battlefield tapped. Okay. So. Landfall craziness. Super great with landfall. Yeah. Your scoot swarm. Your all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, we got a fight effect. Oh, that was so, that's so, so good. Fight effect. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my god, I got another mana dork. Oh, this is such a good pack. This is uh, one blue green, and, and whenever you cast a kick, cast a kick spell, gain two life, and it's just a two four. And here we go. We got Lol Mage's Domination, Blue Blue X. Let's call this spell costs three less to cast if, you could, if it targets a creature whose controller has eight or more cards in their graveyard. Gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X or less. That is awesome. What a great wow, way to round out is... the, round out this box. In all honesty. Oh, that is so good. Now I know that we have one more. Which is your box topper. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I don't know if we should have the box topper in there or not. I can't remember. Um, I don't think so. Because... Yeah, I because I think, like, like there's buy a box promos versus yeah. box toppers. Yeah, like Kenrith. Um, like Kenrith. Yeah, like, and the whole Kenrith kind of debate came yeah. up at one point. So... 
Whatever um, this is, guys, no matter what, we're just not going to put it into the uh, end of the deck. Yeah, right. He's going to crack a scalding card. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> yeah. Have whatever. Is there a little peel thing? There is. All right, remember, now you got to slam it. you got to slam it on there. You're going to open it from the back. You're going to slam it on the table. Show us what it is. Okay, we open this carefully. Uh, this is awkward, opening a single card out of a, a thing like this. Yeah, you're afraid you're going to bend it, you know? Yeah. All right. This is my first box topper ever. Oh, is it? Wow, live on stream. Love live it. Live on stream. My first ever box topper. All right. All right. Here we go. Horizon Canopy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not bad. Horizon Pan Canopy, draw a card. That's not bad. So I can, I put, mean, it in, I bad, can put it in my deck Too bad then? you can't put it in your deck. <laughs> can you put it in your deck now that it sucks? It's a dual lane. This doesn't <laughs> suck. This card's awesome. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I know. I just, you know, everything is always compared to, to a uh, fetch land nowadays. So. Horizon Canopy. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's good. Yeah. Technically, right. then it makes it Canopy. six mythics for this box. Then. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's pretty good sweet. Point. I mean, all right. So before we go into mine, let's um, just a quick kind of overview of where you think you're going to go with yours. You know, you you've pulled some stuff for landfall. You've pulled some stuff for party. You've got a Shia. You've got. I mean, what do you? What are your initial thoughts on where you think you want to go? Oh, uh, there are just some insane powerful cards like this, this, this combo here with this, this Wrath plus a Shia is just going to be just raw power for the deck. And that's awesome. Like this, this Maga, like this, this, this extra turn guy is just going to be raw power, right? Uh, outside of mm -hmm. just raw power, I think the, the kicking is going to be awesome because I think a lot of the stuff that does kicking spells is also like uh like creatures that incorporate into a party so that makes Tazri a little better uh and there are just cards here that cost less for for uh creatures being in my, for having like creatures in my party which are going to be awesome and then i think there's going to be just random landfall stuff like this scoot swarm and this feldar retreat uh and there's a there's a couple more in here like lotus curb which is going to be a good ramp card you know good color fixer I, I don't yeah, think Lotus Cobra is never not good in any deck. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm going to go deep on the uh, the landfall stuff. It's just going to mm -hmm. more be like these really strong, like stand out by themselves, powerful landfall cards. Uh, so you're not going to lean on a theme other than so that, much. So it's gonna be like, you are just going to go raw power. Just like underlying landfall stuff, and then on top of that, some kicker stuff, and then on top of that, party stuff for like. Synergy. I think the party and some of the kicking things uh, inner inner like mesh a little uh, pretty well. There there are some uncommon stuff to give anthems, uh, yep. and there are, there are some cards in here that that do do token things like this myriad construct, this squad commander. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a couple three other ones. Uh, yeah, you've got a, you've got a lot tokens. of themes and a lot of options. So in your maybe box. there could be some like random times where I just you know anthem out. You know, all my stuff getting like plus four, plus four or something. Yep. But it seems like just good party mechanics, good kicker cards, just very high value plays, good, just solid cards in general. And I like know, it. Five so you're going to stick with Tazri you know, then? With five surprisingly color? decent synergies, I think. Yep. So you're going to stick with Tazri then as the commander? Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. All right, well, we'll get into brewing yeah, right. here in just a bit. But first, we have to open a box. Ladies and gentlemen, I think Ryan might have muted himself. I have not muted myself. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, can you I hear me? I think I'm still streaming. Can anybody hear me? I don't know what's happening. I, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, did you did you like disconnect or your world just disappeared? Uh, I can hear you. Lie your... down on that. Can anybody hear me? Hello? Anybody? I seem to have lost Ryan. I can hear you. We you can hear both of us. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. I figured it I figured it out. Oh my oh, god. Oh jeez. <laughs> 
<laughs> Technical difficulties. All right. Well, while he's while he's dealing with that. Okay. Hey, that. Ryan. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you not hear me still? Oh, that's fantastic. Ah, <clears throat> uh, we're figuring this out. Uh, I I figured it out. No, that that's embarrassing. <laughs> What, what did you do? What my, happened? My, my, my headphones came out and I didn't notice. <laughs> oh my god. That's, uh... Oh, that is, that is comedy gold. That happened. All right. <clears throat> okay, that so... Happened. Without further ado, uh, I'm going to sit here and sort out my stuff here for the deck building. But while I do that, we're all going to enjoy Ryan here with his awesome Dominaria box he's going to open for us. All right. So can everybody see my world okay? So, Dominaria. All of her glory. So, all right, so Dominaria. I think there's a legendary in every pack here in Dominaria. Is that is that the case? Is that true? I'm 90% sure. Yeah, I I, think they're all like, going to be Squeedy Immortals, <laughs> mark my words. I think that was like the whole gimmick of it all, is like, ooh, there's a legend in every pack. Just like, I think... War of the Spark was like, there's a Planeswalker in every Planeswalker pack. Planeswalker in every pack. Yeah, I remember that. All right, so Legendary in every pack. It's all going to be... They're, they're all going to be Squeeze. Mark my words. Every one of them. It's going to be a Squeeze. So, all right, so... Aiming for some decent stuff here. Really want to get something super busted and amazing. But we'll see what we got. There's a lot of really good cards in Dominaria that are from, I mean, I mean, a commander perspective, but also, like, I like the CEDH staples that came out of Dominaria. There's a lot of really good ones. And I know that this isn't going to be a CEDH pod, of course, but um, but I'm hoping to hit, like, Muldrotha. Um, I'm hoping to hit, you know, like, one of uh, Dar Darigaz, if I can, uh, just for the colors, mostly with Darigaz. But I'd love to hit Muldrotha. That's really my goal. It's what I'm really hoping for. Oh, yeah. Muldrotha so, would be really good. Oh, I would love Muldrotha. But we'll see what happens. So. Man, isn't right, it so just like is... a. Isn't it also just a 6 6 Death Toucher for 6? Something like that. It's <laughs> Sultai. So, like, awesome colors, of course. Yeah. Um, you so... get. Uh, oh, what are those, uh, those, like, enchantment book things that, like, have. The sagas? The yeah. sagas, yeah. The, <laughs> the sagas book are... things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say, yeah, also uh, in chat, uh, Lucas said, Joda might be the best, but Muldrotha is awesome as well. Absolutely. Uh, Joda would be really good, because they just round up the five-color offering, and Mike would be the only guy on Sultai at this point. <laughs> He'd be the only one limited in his colors, so. How great would that be? <laughs> oh, yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive in. So I want you to pay attention, Zach, because, see, there's these little perforations down here. I just I didn't know if you knew that or not, and this is how you open packs. Mine like, were on the like, mine were on the right hand side, not the middle, so they were a little more difficult you're, to you're, open. You were like ham fisting these, or were like bending your cards in half or something. I don't know what you were doing, no, but no, so, that was not. Look, true. look how easy these open. They just open oh like butter. They just I fall off the try, bone. I want you like to try well it my cooked way. ribs. They they just fall off the bone. You know they're so easy. Oh, uh, bro, those are so. overcooked ribs. I hope you know that they fall off the bone. <laughs> Overcooked. All right, <laughs> so we're going to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of, for the first couple of packs, I'm going to be going through the comments to kind of see what we've got. I'm going to go through every card. Uh, and then we're going to start to speed up just working on the mostly the uncommons and the rares when we start to see a bunch of repeats. Um, I guess, well, I mean, we're starting with Hominid as four, but let's go ahead and stop again and talk about that Commander Legends, uh, what's the one? Jeweled Opposition Lotus. Agent. Opposition oh, Agent. Opposition Agent? So I, I, I chatted the most on the Lotus earlier, so Zach, I'm going to let you take the lead on Opposition Agent. What are your thoughts on Opposition Agent? Well, Opposition Agent uh, is pretty nuts. Absolutely nuts. Uh, in decks like Blood Pod, I think it's just a strict upgrade to Haven Mind Sensor. I don't know if you want to play both. You might want to. But it being in black is the biggest thing for this card. There are so, so many decks that run black. And just being able to just neuter somebody's tutor at instant speed and then tutor up. Like, say if they cast like a demonic tutor or vamp tutor, just go get your 
other half of your win condition for free is insane. And then just the ability just to like stack the deck out, uh, the pot out with not being able to tutor. Like they can, but like why would you? Because you're just give them, giving uh, your opponent free cards. The card yeah. is just nuts. I think the card is fantastic. I think some people are, are uh, losing their minds a little bit here. I think there is a certain degree of overreaction going on. Um, I don't think that, you know, everything is different now. Like, I don't I don't think it's that. Uh, I'm going to try and focus my camera. So I don't think that that's necessarily happening. Uh, I think I, I definitely agree with you when you say, you know, we've got some Aven Mind Sensor vibes going on because of the flash and the limited limitation on the searching. But... You know, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, everything is different. And we have all this stuff that we can get now. But it's like, well, no one plays into Aven Mind Sensor once it resolves. No one's going to play into this once it resolves either. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, do I think that it's going to be in pretty much every black deck? I mean, with very few exceptions? Yeah, I absolutely think so. Um, it's just so good. It, I think Aven Mind Sensor's biggest downside is the fact that it's in white. You know? It's just it's not as commonly a play to color as yeah. black, whereas black is in like 80% of CDH decks. It, it, yeah, <clears throat> exactly. Uh, Jack, that's not a very good like argument in my opinion. If you think about most creatures or even things in CDH, nothing really protects itself. So it being able to die to removal is not... Agreed yeah, I mean, that. you've got hexproof creatures and stuff like that, which are nice, and shroud creatures and stuff, and protection from colors. But, yeah. I mean, for the most part, in CDH, you don't really see a lot of that. No, you, really you don't, don't see Lightning Grease played almost no, ever. That's, and, and honestly, I think this is one of those things that this card is the one that runs on a slope. Uh, the it, it, it gets a lot better when you get to the higher ends of the format. Did so you... CDH is like full of tutors, right? You yeah. know, but the lower ends, I mean, what? You've got maybe a rampant growth that you can get somebody with. People don't run tutors in the more casual end of the format. So it it, it's, it yeah. gets worse the lower down it gets. Did you see the video that Jim put out today from <clears throat> Spike Feeders about this card? Yeah. Uh, so Jim from the Spike Feeders put out a spike on the mic, which is his take on this. Uh, very insightful stuff. Very good. Uh, yeah. He also did some rulings on it as well. Yep. Yep, what what happens if there are multiple in play? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. that, that whole thing. Very very interesting, very good video to go watch. Um, and I think he lays it out very perfectly with the, the whole spectrum of how good this card really is versus the way the game's being played. So uh, the very top end of the format where, where CDH is, this card's insane. It's busted. Yes. But if you go mm -hmm. if you go down, you know, a few pegs, if you will, for, for more casual games, the card's not doing all that much. People aren't tutoring that, that much and when they are, it's usually for lands and like cool, yep. you stop a rampant growth or a cultivate. But then you know he goes into he goes into the whole the whole like um the whole aspect of just like, you know, uh, like you should be having a conversation with the guy playing it at that level. Like, is this really like the play experience we're going for like when you're playing a card like that against us? It's very, exactly. it's very insightful. Yeah. It's very insightful. Very good. Yeah, very good. highly recommend you check it out if you have not seen it. Uh, it's Spike on the Mic. It's by the Spike Feeders. Uh, it's on YouTube, so just, you know, go check it out. Very good. Uh, it talked about some ruling stuff in there, too, which I don't re want to repeat because I'm not a judge, and I'll probably say it wrong. So just check out that video if you want to see some ruling things on it. <clears throat> uh, but overall, I think we're going to see it as an instant staple uh, in CEDH. Uh, it will basically be run in just about all decks. Um, the yeah. I, we already talked about the lotus uh, the lotus card earlier, so I don't want to harp on that too much again. Uh, but just for those of you who have joined us who haven't yet, we're basically seeing that that will be good. It won't be an instant include in everything in CEDH, uh, but we will see that in a certain amount of decks. Very uh, all mono colored is going to love it. Yisan Goto is going to absolutely love it. Um, and when you start to get into the more restrictive colors uh, that are actually part of the casting cost, not just the color identity, so not like Kenrith, but things like, um, you're talking Elsha, it's not going to be as good in Elsha. Uh, that's not to say that it's not just good, you know, for ramping out your commander, but it's not going to be as good as, let's say, in Urza, in Yisan, in Godo, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it is, it's fantastic in so many other things, uh, Tassiger and Gitrog and all of those. They're just going to absolutely love this thing, so... <clears throat> all right oh, all right what do you got what do you got what do you open there all right so let's let's dive into dominaria so first card homerid explorer uh three three for four when it enters the battlefield uh target player mills four 
So. Mill strategy. All right. Yeah, mill strategy. We should trade. <laughs> we should we should take up trading. Uh, get you lava runner. It's uh, one red for a one two. As long as there are two or more instant or sorcery cards, it gets plus one plus zero and has haste. Eh, eh not bad. So blue. Red. Adamant will one and a white target creature gets two two and gains indestructible combat trick. You know uh, it's an instant opt. Absolutely great. Scry one draw card. Love that. Love to see that. Uh, grow from the ashes two and a green for a sorcery with kicker two. Search your library for a basic land card put on the battlefield and shuffle. Uh, if it was kicked, instead search for two and then put it onto the battlefield. Oh, search your library for two basic land cards. Very nice. Uh, so. Okay, early game for some fixing. Later game for better ramp. I like that. Blessing of Bells and Lock. Instant for a black target creature plus gets two plus two plus one, and it's if it's legendary, it also gains lifelink. Okay. Broken Bond. Now that I like. It's a sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I like that. Leo, I don't know how good yeah. naturalized effects are going to be. It could be uh, uh, artifact or enchantment. Yeah, you're right. I'm not sure because we were. I mean, I've looked at some of the decks already that have been brewed from yesterday. We're seeing very creature heavy, so I would love to see. Uh, I'd love to see more creature removal. I'm, I mean, I'm in pack yeah. one for God's sakes. Let's, yeah. let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> All right, uh, Mesa Unicorn. Uh, it is one in a white for a two-two life linker. You know, whatever. Divination two in a blue. Draw two cards. Love that. Uh, short sword, uh, an equipment for one, gets plus one, plus one with equip one. Yeah, okay. Uh, into our uncommons, lingering phantom, five and a black for a spirit. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you may pay black. If you two return it from, uh, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. And artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. Shield of the Realm, if a source would deal damage to equipped creature, prevent two of it. Uh, it's an equipment for two and it's equipped one. And then we'll have our Urza's Ruinous Blast. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. Four Ooh. and a white for a legendary sorcery. <laughs> we got Raz, boys. <laughs> <laughs> we got Raz, fellas. That That's wasn't a bad nuts. start. Did this say uh, non-land permanents? Uh, exile all non-land permanents, Ashaya player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tetsuko Umizawa F Fugitive. Uh, one and a blue for a legendary human rogue. Creatures you control with power one... Well, power, toughness, one or less can't be blocked. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, forest and a sapling. Oh, I, thought that, I thought that card had, like, a draw a card attached to it as well. No, it's just that everyone plays it in Yuriko. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. That, that, it's just yeah. an instant staple in Yuriko is what it is. Yeah, that so. and uh, uh, Adam's favorite deck, the blue-green guy. Edric. Yeah, Edric. it's an Edric. Yeah. So... All right, so Sergeant at Arms, two and a white, uh, with kicker two and a white. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two one one white soldiers. Uh, it's a two three. Befuddled, target creature gets minus four minus zero until end of turn and draw a card, and that costs three. It's an instant. Yeah. Gift of Growth, uh, one and a green for an instant kicker two. Untapped target creature gets plus two plus two. If it was kicked, it gets plus four plus four plus four instead. Combat trick, I guess maybe. We'll see. Uh, Caligo, Skin Witch, uh, one and a black with kicker, three and a black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kick, each opponent discards two cards. That would be six for a one, three. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> six, six mana for a seven, uh, for a seven for one. Uh, that's a thing. Nah, that's actually not a bad point, so... All right, so Gideon's Reproach, one and a white. It deals four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. I like that. Some of the things that are coming at me are going to be thick in this pod. So, Thalid Omnivore, three and a black for a three, three. Uh, I can pay one, sacrifice another creature, give it plus two, plus two, till end of turn. Uh, if a Saperlene was sacrificed this way, we gain two life. So... Uh, Jousting Lance. It's an equipment for two. An equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero. As long as it's your turn, the equipped creature has first strike. Ooh, that's aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sapperling Migration. One and a green for a sorcery with kicker four. Create two one one Sapperling tokens. If it was kicked, create four instead. I, 
I'm, I'm kind of seeing definitely the kicker thing going on here. You know, early game versus late game. There's something to be said about that. So, blink of an eye. Fantastic card. One in a blue for an instant. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If this was kicked, which the kicker is one in a blue as well, you can also draw a card. This is a CEDH staple. Yep. <laughs> Already sees play. Yep. So, seismic shift. Three and a red for a sorcery. Destroy target land. Up to two target creatures can't block this turn. All right. Uh, Memorial to Genius. We're in our uncommons now. Uh, it, when it enters, it enters the battlefield tapped. I can add blue, and I can pay four to blue and sacrifice it to draw two cards. Actually, kind of like that. Wild Onslaught. Three and a green with kicker four. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. I like that. If it was kicked, put two 1-1 one, one counters on it instead. Okay. Okay, our rare. Mirari Conjecture. Uh, four and a blue. Uh, and the, it is a Saga. So, uh, one is return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. Two is return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And number three is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Uh, we'll see if we go on a spell slinger theme. So, oh, we are, we, we do get a legendary every pack. I'm getting, I've got all kinds of great choices. I have so. tons of great legends. Yeah, okay, so Grun the Lonely King, 4 and 2 green with Kicker 3. Uh, if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with 5 1 1 counters on it, which makes it a 10 10. <laughs> and whenever it attacks alone, double its power and toughness until end of turn. So is it a 5 wow. mana 5 5 and then 10 mana 10 10? It's a 5, it's a 5 5 for 6. Okay. Or I can pay 9, make it a 10 10, and when it attacks alone, it would become a 20 20. Yeah, that's a that's a clock. <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty good. Oh, cleric, I like it. All right, on to pack three. I'm gonna ooh, just like butter. Oh, so see, so smooth. Try not man. Try, try I'm not manhandling it. the pack like you try, do. Try try opening it the way that I open. Tried to open mine, but like the glue. What you, you you try to smear the pack off of the cards? Is look, what you're man, to do. Look, dude, it's you're like uh, bleh, smear them off. Uh, it's nice when it works, I tell you. <laughs> when it works. All right, uh, Frenzy Rage. It's an aura. Uh, it's one in a red. It gets two, one, two, plus two, plus one, and has menace. I'm not a huge fan of auras. You get two for one to lock. Uh, Syncopate. X in a blue for an instant. Counter target spell unless it's good controller pays X. If it's countered this way, they exile it, which is nice against Mike. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we, might, we might look into that. Syncopate's just a good card. It, it will be. I, I'm 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 liking the spells I'm grabbing it's, it's so counter far. Anything, we're right? very it's, we're very early. It's unrestricted counter, right? Uh, like, uh, for... it's counter target spell. Yeah. Unless they pay X. Yeah. So uh, if he taps out, I can I can get him for just two, basically. All right, Benelish Honor Guard, one and a white for a two-two. Uh, it gets plus one plus zero for each legendary creature you control. Nice. Uh, get to Chronicler, it's one in a red for a 1-3 with Kicker 3 in a red. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return target, instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Once again, the instant, the Spell Slinger Synergy, I'm liking it. Corrosive Ooze, one in a green uh, for a 2-2 two -two Ooze. Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature, destroy all equipment attached to that creature in the combat. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, 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 great. <laughs> okay, this one's good. Divest. For it's one black for a sorcery. Target player reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature from it. They discard that card. That's pretty good in our in ours because we'll there's so many things that you can that we're gonna we're so creature heavy. So, all right, land of war scout. Uh, one in a green for a one three elf scout, and I can tap it to put a land from a hand of the battlefield. Very good card. Love this card. Cabal paladin. Three and a black for a 4-2 human knight. Whenever you cast a historic spell, Cabal Paladin deals two damage to each opponent. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Did I lose you, Zach? Are you still there? I'm here. I'm here. I'm reading okay. chat. I'm reading chat. <laughs> okay. I was just like, I was just like, oh, I, I wonder if I, I'm talking to nobody right I'm now. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Hands. No, it's fine. All right, so uh, Pegasus Courser, two and a white for a 1-3 flying. Whenever it attacks, another target, uh, attacking creature gains flying. Yeah, I guess. 
Uh, into the Uncommons, Champion of the Flame, one and a red for a 1-1 one, one creature with Trample. He gets two, plus two, plus two for each aura and equipment attached to it. Mm. Memorial to War, uh, enters the battlefield tap, and I can sacrifice it, pay four and a red, tap and sack it to destroy target land. Ooh, Sulfur Falls! Yay! No. Hey. hey, and there's like something wrong with my Sulfur Falls. There's a weird coloring disc thing, but uh, anyway, so Sulfur Falls... Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an iron on a mountain, add red or white. Very good. Ooh! A foil! Ooh. Karn's Temporal Sundering! <laughs> He's playing extra turns! <laughs> extra turns, baby! I might go Spell Slinger at this point. This is a foil, too. I love it. Nice. So good. It's extra turn plus bounce something, too, right? Yeah, it's extra turn plus bounce. Oh. Alright, so Legendary Sorcery. Target player takes an extra turn. Return up to one target non-land permanent and to its owner's stand. Exile Karn's Temporal Sundering. <laughs> Counts as a, a storage baby. spell, too. That's insane. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Love it, love it, love it. And Halar, the Fire Fletcher, one and Gruel for a 3-3 trample. Whatever you cast a spell, if that spell is kicked, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then it deals damage each order number of 1-1 one, one counters on it to each opponent. That's actually not bad. Hmm. I kind of like that. Um, will that end up being my commander? I don't know, but we'll see. And then some stuff. The Are there many three-color legendaries in Dominaria? Yeah, things like Moldrotha. Are uh, they all, they're all mythic, though. Yeah, they're mythic. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Wait, hold on. What did you do? Did you... you I, I, I didn't see oh, this you, one. So you take the back of the pack where that, that flap is... You yeah. flap it up, and then you put your thumbs on either side, so and I flip then it up. spread it apart. Yeah. And then and then you do that? Why yeah. would you do that? <laughs> I feel Dude, like I'm bending the, the edges the, of their it. Their glue has that's gotten hor- insane over the years. That is horrid. Okay, okay. I'm seeing what's going on. It's, it's like just, opening it like a... It spreads open. Like it's a, real nice. A tortilla or something. I'll, I'll open that one in a bit. Uh, ma- All right. Ma- Matthew and chat, yes, this will be on YouTube for you to watch after we're done live streaming. There will be a VOD. <laughs> Love it. All right. Uh, dub, two and a white for an aura. Uh, gets uh, Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two. Has first strike and is a knight. Talarian Scholar, the professor would be proud. Two and a blue for a two, three with nothing else. Frenzied Rage. It's an aura. Uh, we've already seen that one. Land of War Envoy. Uh, two and a green for a 3-2. I can pay one and a green to add one man of any color. Fixing, which will be nice. Uh, Caligo Skin Witch. One and a black. Kicker three and a black. We already talked about that one. Cloud Reader Sphinx. Love it. Uh, four and a blue for a 3-4 Sphinx with flying. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, I scry two. Fiery Intervention, uh, oh, four and a red uh, for a sorcery, and I could choose one or the other. It either deals five damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. Five damage to a creature is legit, so. Blood Tallow Candle, it's one for an artifact. I could pay six and tap it, sacrifice it, and then target creature gets minus five, minus five. Um, I'm hoping my removal isn't so bad that I have to run this, so. Is it colorless? It's, it's an artifact. So, and what's the activation cost? Sorry, is it four? Six tap and sack it. Oh, I mean, it's removal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, removal's removal, right? Sometimes you just gotta kill a creature, you know. Um, demonic vigor, uh, enchant creature gets plus one plus one. It's one black. Uh, it's an aura, and when an enchanted creature dies, return it to its owner's hand. That's not horrible. Um, call the cavalry, three and a white for a sorcery. Create two, two, two knight creature tokens with vigilance. Hey, Goblin War Chief. <clears throat> one and two red. Uh, we're in our uncommons now. Uh, one and two red for a goblin warrior. It's a two, two. And goblin spells I cast cost one less. And goblins I control have haste. Gonna go really well in my Squee the Immortal deck that I'm <laughs> inevitably gonna build here. <laughs> Memorial to Glory. Uh, I can pay three and a white, sacrifice to create two one one white soldier creatures. Ooh, Helm of the Host. Hey! <laughs> I was hoping you were going to open that it's, one. It's my girl. Oh, love it. Love this equipment. Oh, so, of course, Helm of the Host for all you Goto fans out there. I mean, all five of you in the chat. So, glad to have you with us. 
<laughs> it's a legendary artifact equipment. Uh, beginning of combat, I can create a token that's a copy of a quick creature, except for the token isn't legendary. If the quick creature is legendary, that token gains haste. You do not sack that up token at the end of turn. You just get it forever. Um, it costs four and an equip is five. So that's going to go in my deck on principle. <laughs> I, well, so, even like outside of principle, that card is nuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just good. So, all right. Uh, and uh, Danitha, Danitha Capashan Paragon. Uh, two and a white for a human knight. First strike, vigilance, lifelink, aura and equipment spells you cast cost one less. If I mean, if I was going in that strategy, and then some stuff. All right, we're gonna do the smear. Yeah. So chat, chat's uh, telling me there's only three cards that are three or three legends that are three or more colors, two mythics Oof. and a rare. Yikes! I mean, I might luck out and well, I don't know if luck out's the word, but I mean, Joda five color. I have basically all the options in the world. I would love. I honestly, I'd be happy with any of them. Yeah. I really would. So. Um, but I mean, I think I'm starting to see somewhat of the makings of some sort of spell slinger thing going on here, but well, it's, it's really early. It's too early to tell. Still a lot of packs to go. <clears throat> you got it. Uh, so the Avenant Trapper, two and a white human archer. Whenever I cast a historic spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. It's a three, two syncopate again, fire elemental. That's good. Three red, red for a five, four. Just good common. Dark Bargain. Uh, three and a black for an instant. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two in your hand and the other into your graveyard. Dark Bargain deals two damage to you. If I pull a Moldrotha, I would love that. Croshan Druid. Two and a green for a 2-3 Centaur Druid with kicker four and a green. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, gain ten life. That's eh, not a bad reset button. <clears throat> uh, Yavamaya Sapherd. Uh, it is two and a green for a 2-2 two, two fungus. When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Not bad. Lots of sapperlings. Partic 1. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing that. I'm not sure if I'd want to go on the sapperling plan, but once again, we're still very early. You get a, uh, the green-black guy, uh, Slimefoot. Oh, yeah, Slimefoot the stowaway. I mean, if, that, if that's my best option, I might just do some Slimefoot action. So... Uh, Partic Wanderer, 5-5 five, five with Trample for 6. Colorless, why not? Rampaging Cyclops, uh, 3 and a red for a 4-4. Four, four. It gets minus 2, minus 0, as long as there are two more creatures are blocking it. Blech. Divination again. Icy Manipulator. Actually, that's <laughs> Card's not good. bad. Yeah. Card's good. Yeah, tap target artifact creature or land. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, so, yeah, Icy Manipulator is 4 for an artifact that says pay 1 and tap. To tap target artifact creature or land. Yeah, dude. He's Merfolk over here playing, with, over here playing yep. with alpha cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Old school. I love it. Good old IC manipulator. I remember playing with that card. I'm an old man. So. <laughs> Merfolk Trickster. Now, this is a two. This is two blue for a 2 2 Merfolk Wizard with Flash. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent's controls. It loses all abilities until end of turn. Interesting. Uh, it's also it's also drawn by our favorite artist Jesper Ising. He was just on the show recently. Nice. So for those of you who want to see it, a blurry, out of focus version of it, here you go. <laughs> Merfolk trickster. Siege gang commanders are rare. That's pretty good. <laughs> Card so that good. is that is really good. I love siege gang. Uh, that plus my goblin. Um, all right, so Siege Gang Commander, three red red. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, I create three uh, one one red goblins. I can be one a red sack a goblin to deal two damage to any target. Ooh, so good. Love that card. And a foil jousting lance. A quick creature gets plus two plus zero. Uh, we've already seen that one. Hey, Slimefoot! <laughs> we, we did it! We did it, Slimefoot! <laughs> I mean. It's, that's, I mean, right now, Slimefoot's not looking horrible. <laughs> not yeah. looking that bad. Look, look, looks like saplings are back on the menu, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to try it again. We're going to try your horrible method. Look how you know, clean that is. I mean, do, maybe just Dominaria's packs are superior. 
That was actually pretty good. What do you mean superior? Bad. Like the glue, like <laughs> Su- superior packaging, brother. I don't know about that. Mine were indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> no, yours would not open to save your life. Oh, it's good. All right, so arcane flight. It's a uh, one blue for an aura. Gets one. Uh, Chanted creature gets plus one plus one. Has flying. Get to chronicler one and a red for a one three human wizard with kicker three and a red. Uh, we've already seen that one. Finalish Honor Guard, we've seen that one. Artificer's Assistant. Uh, it is one blue for a 1-1 one, one bird with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one. I like that card. Uh, we've seen Land of War Envoy. Uh, uh, so, Wind Grace Acolyte, four and a black for a 3-2 flyer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard and gain three life. Oh, nice. Moldrotha. Moldrotha, baby. All right. Uh, Kelden Raider, four, uh, two and two red for a four three, uh, and whenever it enters the battlefield, I can discard a card if I do draw a card. So rummage. Pegasus Courser, two and a white for a one three. We've already seen that. Fungal Infection. Okay. Uh, target creature gets minus one minus one till end of turn. Create a one one green Sapperling. Ooh. Okay. Rescue. Return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. It's one blue for an instant. I like that. That's good. Target permanent. Uh, target permanent. Wow. Permanent, not non-land, just permanent. So that's land too. Yeah. I my, like it. No, my Ashaya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna cast that spell? It's actually it's it's I control. So unfortunately, oh. that work. So. Uh-oh. All right. Uh, Urza's tomb. It's two for an artifact. I could pay three to draw a card, then discard a card unless I exile historic card from my hand. Eh. Sure. Goblin barrage. Um, three and a red. Uh, with Kicker, sacrifice an artifact or goblin. It deals four damage to target creature. If it was kicked, it also deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Nice. Ooh, Black Blade Reforged. Ooh. It gets one, uh, it's, uh, it's a legendary equipment, uh, two, and then it gets, a quick creature gets one, one for each land I control. You can equip it for seven, or you can equip it to a legendary creature for three. Maybe. <laughs> Sinvada, the Rising Deep. Six blue blue for an 8-8 eight, eight Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> and it has kicker one and a blue, because why not? Why not make it cost ten? <laughs> uh, if When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, return all creatures to their owner hands, except for merfolk, krakens, leviathans, octopuses, and serpents. Uh, yeah. G- give, me that, give me that Leviathan tribal, baby. <clears throat> Leviathan Tribal. Dude, you do that and then cast Karn? Ayo, Karn's Temporal Sunday. Oh, so good. And just sail in with an 8-8. I love it. All right. I, actually, I'm... Man, you know, you done made a believer out of me with that, that spread thing. I mean, that was... That was that was smooth as butter. It's good, right? It's it was... That was... That was Zendikar Rising is like put together with Gorilla Glue, you know? <laughs> they quadruple sealed it. Yeah. All right. We've got Dub. we got Talarian Scholar. we got Frenzy Rage. Healing Grace. Uh, prevent three damage to be dealt by any target this turn. And I gain three life. Soul Salvage. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. It's two and a black for a sorcery. Grow from the ashes we've seen. Tragic Poet. Uh, one white for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, I can sacrifice, tap and sacrifice, return target enchantment from my graveyard to my hand. Eh. All right, and next one is uh, Academy Journey Mage. Four and a blue for a 3-2. This spell costs one less if you control a wizard. When it enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. I like the tempo swings. Always a fan of those. Animal War effects are awesome. Yeah. Uh, Baloth Gorger, two and two green for a four four with kicker four. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with three one one counters on it, which makes it a seven seven. Hmm, not bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not bad. Guardians of Koilos, uh, it's five for a four four construct. When it enters the battlefield, you return another target historic permanent you control to its owner's hand. I mean, if there's something that gives me benefit to that, maybe. Uh, that's a really good with sagas. That's really good with sagas. That's actually a really good point. The sagas do make that. Yeah, sagas good. are awesome with that card. 
All right, into the uncommons. Four, uh, Fire Fist Adept, four and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, deals X damage to target creature where your opponent controls, where X is the number of wizards. We've got the wizards sub team. Dude, you're doing everything that I'm doing over here. What's up with that? <laughs> you got <laughs> wizards, you, you got I'm... kicker. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, kicker, <laughs> wizards. Actually, that's actually really true. <laughs> oh. All right, uh, Natural Spiral. Return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. That's I like that. That's just straight up good. Yeah. Diligent Excavator. Uh, one and a blue for a 1-3 human. Uh, whenever you cast a historic spell, target player puts a, a mills two, is what they do. Ooh. All right. So our rare is Torgar, Famine Incarnate. Ooh. It is six black black for a seven six avatar. It's legendary. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures, and then this spell will cost two less for each one. So that's not bad with Slimefoot. With the sapperlings. Yeah, that is. Eight was it uh, eight mana though? Oh. It's eight. Yeah, yeah it's that's eight. A lot. So whenever Torgar Famine Incarnate enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their started life total rounded down. That's brutal. I love it. Wow, half their life total? That's a lot of damage. That yeah, that could yeah, I mean that's you know, up to twenty or more. So Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's oh look at that. It's it's a little clunky. It's a little clunky. A little clunky. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm just maybe I'm just not good at it yet. I mean, practice makes perfect, Ryan. So yeah, and I've got I've got 36 packs to get it right. So <laughs> all right, healing grace, uh, relic runner uh, can't be blocked if you cast a historic spell this turn. Uh, Warlord's fury. It's a sorcery for a red creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. Draw a card. Bad. Creatures? That's not bad. Creatures you control. Oh, that's all, all of them. them. That's yeah. That's not bad. Uh, charge. Uh, instant for a white creatures you control get plus one plus one. Ooh, Gaius Protector. It's got a lure effect. So three and a green for a four two, and it must be blocked if able. So if you want to alpha strike, you, they all ha all of your opponent's creatures have to block Gaius Protector. Yeah, which is really nice. Wind Grace Acolyte, four and a black. We've already seen that. Uh, Arbor Armament, uh, one green. Put a 1-1 one, one counter target creature. It gains reach until end of turn. Dark <clears throat> Bargain, we've already seen. Vicious Offering, instant for one and a black with Kicker Sacrifice a creature. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. If the spell's kicked, it gets minus five, minus five. Not bad. Guardians of Coilos, we just talked about. In Bolus's Clutches. Mmm, I like that. Uh, it is a legendary enchantment aura. Uh, four and two blue. Uh, enchant permanent. You control enchanted permanent, and it's legendary. Ooh, that's you can... strong. Yeah, that's actually really strong. I like that. Oh, you control somebody's... enchanted permanent. Just that yoink, that Golos is mine now. Thank you. Sorcerer's oh my god, wand. that would be so good. Activate Golos hit Karn, Central Sundering. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> so good. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Sorcerer's one. We're into our uh, more uncommons. Uh, it's an equipment with equip three. This creature gets. I can tap it. Deal one damage to our creature or player. Or I'm sorry, target player or planeswalker. If this creature is a wizard, it deals two damage instead. Settle the score. Two and two black. Exile target creature. Put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. I love me some exile target creature. Love that. Oh. Unconditional creature removal. Get in. Yep. Get in. All right. And our rare, uh, Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp, four blue, blue for a legendary Jinn, five, six. You may pay three blue and tap an untapped artifact you control rather than this play this spell's mana cost, and it's flying. That's a strong flyer. That is for certain. Strong, How big? strong flyer. Uh, five, six flyer. And you can pay blue, blue, blue and tap an artifact? No, play three. And blue, so four total. Oh. Three and a blue. Yeah, that's pretty good for a 5-6. For 5-6 flyer. Yeah. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Dub, Valerian Scholar, Frenzied Rage. Feral Abomination is five and a black for a 5-5 five, five Death Toucher. Not bad. Hmm. Land of War Oh, Land of War Elves. Yay. Yeah. Got our <laughs> Needs. 
Speaking of alpha cards, <laughs> Lana War Elves. Bro, it looks like a turn two slime foot to me. <laughs> got, got there. Turn two slime foot, baby. Oh, so good. Uh, there's the Thalid Omnivore. Skittering Surveyor. Uh, three for a one-two construct. When there's a battlefield, I can search my library for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it in my hand. Academy Drake. Uh, two and a blue for a 2-2 two, two flyer with kicker four. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two and one counters. Seismic Shift. Memorial to Genius. Sarah Angel. Now, speaking of Alpha. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> what's oh. go what, what are we opening? What oh, are we opening Oh, Alpha stuff. Oh, Alpha cards. Sarah Angel needs no introduction. Three, three white white for a 4-4 four, four flying Vigilance Angel. So good. Uh, Orcish Vandal, uh, one and a red, Sar uh, for a 1-1, one, one Orc, tap, sacrifice an artifact, artifact, it deals damage, two damage to any target. Ooh, Marwyn, Marwyn the Nurturer, elf themes, baby. Two and a green, uh, legendary elf druid, 1-1, one, one. when other and other elves enter the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter, and I can tap to add an amount of green equal to Marwyn's power. So, Marwyn's actually a CEDH deck, for those of you who don't know. Yes, so, it is. Um, it plays very similar to Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. So. Mmm, I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better. It's nice, man. It's nice. It's, I mean, you're making a believer out of me. I'll tell you that right now. All right, so Keldon Warcaller is one in a red for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever it attacks, I can put a lore counter on target Saga I control. I mean, sure. Knight of New Banalia, uh, one in a white for a 3-1. Deep Freeze. There we go. This is what I like. Uh, two in a blue for an aura. Enchanted creature. Uh, it has base power and toughness 0-4, has defender, loses all other abilities, and is a blue wall. So basically, your commander is no longer a commander. Oh, yeah. That's so good against Golos. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so good against Golos. Oh, my Golos. God. <laughs> Zero four with Defender, baby. Love it. I love those effects. Yep. It's like a Gaius little... Protector. Um, we already seen that one. Dark Bargain we've seen. Sparring Construct. Whenever It's a one for a one one construct. Whenever it dies, I can put a one one counter on another creature. Ooh, here we go. Eviscerate. Uh, three to black. Sorcery. Destroy target creature. Strong. Is that sorcery yep. or instant? It's a sorcery. I wish it was an instant, but you know. Hey, it's you've got two unconditional black removal spells. That's pretty good so far. And yeah. I've got deep freeze. I've got blink of an eye. I've got I've got some decent removal, which I'm liking. Yeah. Uh, unwind. Love unwind. Counter target non creature spell. Untap up to three lands. Very good card. Yeah. Was it tap or untap? Untap up to three. Okay. It's like rewind yeah. or snap. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought I was untap. Yep. Voltaic Servant, at the beginning of your end step, untap target artifact. It's two for a one three. Run amok, target attacking creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample. Sure. Elfame Druid, okay, one and a green for a zero two elf. I can tap it to add one green or tap it to add two green to spend mana uh, to cast kick spells. Cool. That's a that's a ramp. I like it. Uh, Howling Golem, three for a two three. Whenever it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. Get out of my face! Hey, another Karn's Temporal Sunder. Oh! <laughs> hey, why not? Why not have two of them? Hey, looking why, for why wouldn't that happen? Looking for some trades. I got some pretty cool legendaries here. <laughs> <laughs> we, who needs a Who needs a playset of Karn's Temporal Sundering? So good. Uh, and then the legendary is Whisper Blood Liturgist. Um, uh, three to black for a two two. I can tap, sacrifice two creatures, return target creature card from graveyard to battlefield. That's not bad in slime foot. So if we're going on the slime foot plan. So once this row is done, we're gonna just start looking at the uncommons and the rares. So it's gonna start to speed up. But I just wanted to get a baseline of kind of where we're at with things. What is what is chat saying so far? Uh I don't know if there's a... Someone's asking if there's an infinite combo in Dominaria. I don't know if there is. They usually don't print infinite combos in the same set. Um, I know that they sometimes accidentally do it in block. Yeah. Um, so they yep. did the Felidar combo with Sahili. So that was... Whoops. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> whoopsies. <laughs> yeah, whoopsies. Um, but I think those were 
No, I'm, were they different sets though, right? One was Aether they, and one was They were different sets. Kaladesh? Yeah, it was Kaladesh. But same block. But yeah, same set, standard, same block. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure the story behind that is when they changed standard up to make it less sets uh, per Yeah, per two block, block standard, format. And yep. then they had that set in the making and then like a year or two later they changed it back to the original way. And so the two cards weren't actually supposed to be seen together in the same standard, but they... Ah, uh, they... sounds like a good cover story to me. They messed with <clears> the <throat> structure, and here we are. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hominid's Explorer, Gitu Lava Runner, Sarah Disciple, one and a white, flying first strike for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever I cast... Whenever you cast a historic spell, it gets plus one, plus one. Tularian Scholar, Arbor on Armament. Uh, we've already seen it. Wade Grace Acolyte, we've seen. Academy Journey Mage, we've seen. Bayloth Gorger, we've seen. Guardians of Coilos, Keldon Ryder. Okay, uh, Triumph of Gerard. One <laughs> and a white for a saga. Uh, one and two are put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control with the greatest power. <clears throat> and three is target creature you control with the greatest power gains flying, first strike, and lifelink. That's pretty good. Takes that's, a a, that's an oh, uncommon one, right? Yeah, that's an uncommon one. And we have another saga. Uh, it's the Flame of Keld. Uh, one and a red. Uh, the first one is discard your hand. <laughs> the, 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 the number two is draw two cards. And then three is if a red source you would deal damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much plus two. Too bad yeah. Maldrotha isn't red. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a real shame because this is going to be an auto-include. Oh, speaking of legendaries, uh, Kamal's Druidic Vow. That's our rare. It's legendary sorcery. Look at the top X cards. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanents with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. The rest into the graveyard. Really good in most. How do, how do you how do you uh, hit X for your value? Yeah, it's X. It's X and blue. It's X green green. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Uh, legendary is Arvod the Curse, 3, and Orzov, uh, oh, 3, 3, uh, Death Touch, Link, Death Touch, Life Link, other legendary creatures I control get plus 2, plus 2. Sure. All right. It's fine. Last one, riding through the commons. Mm, smooth. Look at that. Oh, it's like, it's, un it's like unwrapping again. It's I think nice. I, I think I bent a card. Gosh darn it, you and your... What? That's not possible. It came like it's that. It's not possible with this method. Send it back to Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get it traded in for a free pack. Uh, we've already seen that one. Invoke the Divine. Destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. You gain four life. Eh. Okay, Voldalian Arcanist. A one in a blue uh, for a 1-3 Merfolk lizard, Wizard. And you can tap it to add Colorless. Spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Interesting. Yeah, there goes in that Spellslinger deck uh, that could yeah, happen. Yeah, possibly. Uh, seen it, seen it, seen it. Avon Sentry, three and a white for a 3-2 flyer. Cabal Ev Evangel, Cabal Evangel, one and a black for a 2-2, but nothing else. Ooh, Primordial Worm, baby. Ooh. Four green green for a 7-6. Get in there. <laughs> it's a, go big or go home. Go big or go home. Uh, Navigator's Compass. When it enters the battlefield, it gain three life. It costs one for an artifact. You tap it until end of turn. Target lands you control becomes the basic land type of your toy choice. That's not bad for fixing, actually. I would rather it just tap for mana, but we beggars can't be choosers. Exactly. Fight with Fire. Two and a red for a sorcery oh. with kicker five and a red. Fight with Fire deals five damage to target creature. If the spell was kicked... It deals 10 damage divided as you choose among any number of targets yeah. instead. Yeah, that thing is oh. awesome. That can go 10 to that the costs, face. <laughs> yeah, 10 to the face. I mean, it costs 9 with that kicker. Yeah, but, but you know, it's fine. But but 10 to just, man, just sweep someone's board. That is brutal. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Oh, board the Weatherlight. I like this card. I'm not sure if it's going to end up in my deck, but because I don't think the theme's going to match. So board the Weatherlight is 1 and a white. For a sorcery, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal, may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand and put the best on the bottom in a random order. So remember, artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So if I get a legendary creature, or I can reveal it and put it in my hand. I like it. Hey! Oh, we're just talking Amber. about that card. <laughs> here we go. Mox Amber. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Ryan's over here actually playing with power. 
<laughs> I got I've got Opt, I've got Blink of an Eye, I've got Mox Amber, Marwin. Mox all. Amber. Uh it's zero for a legendary artifact. Add one mana of any color among legendary creatures or planeswalkers you control. Love it. Ah, oh, and then our legendary is Ergoros, the empty one, four black black for a four three flyer. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. If that player can't, Ooh. you draw a card. Wow. Ooh. That's pretty good. Just kind of random is really strong. Yeah, and if I and if they're if they're helping, I get um, I get to draw a card. All right, so we're gonna start to speed it up. We're in row number two now. We're just gonna look at the uncommons and rares, and of course the legendary if it means uh, if it means anything. So we're gonna speed it up now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bum 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 bum. Dauntless bodyguard two one. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose another creature you control, and I can sacrifice it to give that creature indestructible. That's really good. Oh, Thorn Elemental. Classic card. This is actually a reprint from older sets. Five and green, green. I can have it's a seven, seven elemental. I can have it deal assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Oh, it's so good. And another legendary sorcery. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Five and Orzov. Uh return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's insane! That's really good. Oh, it's insane. With all with all of those uh Yeah, I'm I'm like I'm All those enchantment ooh. all those enchantment cards. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that one and that you control enchant apartment was legendary. Oh that too. That too. Why not? <laughs> Helm of the host. Okay, a foil. Uh spore clown thaliad, because why not? Rona, Disciple of Gix, uh, one, uh, I'm sorry, one in Demir for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may hit, exile hit target historic card from your graveyard. I can uh, cast cards, non-land cards exile with Rona. I can pay for and tap it to exile top card of my library. Not in love with it. Yeah. Hey, there's Karox Playboy, the token. Uh, Noah, the reason why Blink of an Eye is so good is because it's one in a blue to interact with somebody's board. Bounce, bounce something, and then you can pay one in a blue extra to draw a card as well. So you get to two for one on somebody. You got it. Ch cheap interaction is very, very good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wizards, Wizards Retort, uh, one and two blue. Uh, it spell casts one loss, costs one less if I control a wizard, counter target spell. Not bad. Oh, okay. Another duel. Uh, isolated Chapel enters the battlefield tap unless you control a planes or swamp. Very good. Love it, love it. Tatiova. Hey, Tatiova. There's my girl. There it is. There's your girl. There's my girl. <laughs> Tatiova. So I was I was kind of on the slime foot plan <laughs> until <laughs> until my girl Tatiova came out. Cause that that changes things. I mean you have the extra turn spell to go with Tatiova too. Like oh, extra by. turn. I mean it's like I'm building a CDH deck over here. It's crazy. Oh, All right, let's go up to the uncommons. Uh, Chainer's Torment, three and a black for a saga. One and two, it deals two damage to each opponent, you gain two life. And then three is create an XX black nightmare horror creature where X is half your life total rounded up, and it deals X damage to you. Eh. Oh, ew, <laughs> ew. I mean, yeah. you, make like, you make it like a 2020 or like an 1818, but then... Then you become an 1818 yeah. as a person. <laughs> as a person. Ugh. Ugh. Gilded Lotus! Yes! Ooh. Gilded Lotus! That is what I want to see. Such a good card. Oh, all is... of those like 8 mana and 9 mana and 10 mana spells just got way easier to cast. Oh, so good. Oh. And a foil, whatever. Oh, Yargle! <laughs> Yargle! <laughs> Glutton of Urborg. Oh, 9 3 for 5. <laughs> he just gets in there. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I should go Yargle on principle. Just go Yargle. Uh, Ryan, you have a green card in your red stack. Can you please fix it for chat? Oh, people, oh my gosh. People are going I, nuts. I, have, I severely apologize, folks. I am so <laughs> sorry. All right, let's run up to our uncommons. Untamed Kabu, one in a green with kicker three. Vigilance and trample for a two two. If it was kick, it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters. Zalfir and Void, add colorless, but I get to scry one. So it's like a really bad scry temple. <laughs> I mean, I'll do what I can do. I can do what I can, I guess. Ah, uh, okay. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Shahili, Voice That's of Plenty. Good. Yeah, this actually is good. Uh, me, planes, workers, walkers I control, and other creatures I control have hexproof. 
This is a 3-4 flying for 3 and a white, and I can pay 4 green, green, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature I control. I actually like this. This is actually really good. So, I'm digging this one. Uh, Raph, Cap uh, Raph Capassion, Ship's Mage. Two, uh, two white and a blue for a 3-3 three, three Human Wizard. Flash flying. I may cast Historic Spells as though they had flash. That's, that's actually good, too. Ooh, tough. This is tough. This is hard. What am I gonna do? See that you the whole see it's falling apart now. It's not working anymore. See see what you did? You, you may be you may be the, buy into it. Look, man, the packs nowadays are less of a lesser quality than what they used to be. I mean, halfway through Dominaria though, they become lesser quality. Yes, that's how it works. Oh, it's, okay. It's, it's just a quality so control, right. quality control thing. Urza's tomb, fight with fire, knight of malice, first strike, hex proof from white. Uh, gets plus one, plus zero, as long as the any player controls a white permanent. It's one and a black for two, two. And Teshar. Huh. Ooh. Ancestor's Apostle. I mean, this is technically a CDH deck as well, but I just don't think I can make anything out of it with this box. So that's the tough part. Mm. So whenever I can... Whenever I... Yeah, so Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle, is three and a white for a two, two flying bird. Uh, whenever you cast a historic spell... Return target creature with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So there's all kinds of different things you can do with this card, and there's all kinds of really cool interactions and combos, but I just, I don't know if there's really anything we could do with what I have. That's the thing. It's cool, though. I like Tashar. Never say never. You might be able to find a slot for something. Never say never, my friends. Yeah. Exactly I mean, if you right. open Jota, it just goes into five color good stuff. I mean, at this point, if I open Jota, yeah. You just play all everything oh you have so many good cards for joda <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun color commander of course there's good cards for joda <laughs> i mean right now i mean i like that i have like options just through the roof with my uh with my legendaries i'm loving that but right now i'm not in any three colors yet i'm definitely favoring tatiova but if i can get like a red white one i think there might be something in a spell slinger category here but time will tell. Um, okay. Memorial to Folly. Orcish Vandal. Yogmoth's Vile Offering. <sighs> four and a black for a legendary sorcery. Put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard of the battlefield under your control. And destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker. And then exile Yogmoth's Vile Offering. I'm getting all of these legendary sorceries. That Yeah, well, I mean, that's the set. All really yeah, cool legends, course. legendary things. Yeah. Uh, and then our other legendary was Grun again. So, a little bit of cleanup here. A little bit of cleanup. Everything's all messy. All right. Uh, Tony, the, uh, I, I, I believe that is Mike in chat on the Playing With Power account. Yeah, no, I not believe I. so. All right. <clears throat> oh, okay. Skizik, three and a red. Uh, for a 5-3 elemental, this was originally imprinted in Invasion, so they reprinted it. Uh, and it has Kicker Red. Uh, at the beginning of your... It has Trample and Haste. At the beginning of your instep, sacrifice Skizik, or uh, if it wasn't kicked, sacrifice it. So if you pay five, it's a 5-3 with Trample and Haste. Uh, if you pay four, you have to sacrifice it at the end. Dreadshade. Eh, three black uh, for a 3-3, three, three, and I could pay black to give it plus one, plus one. Uh, ba, 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 and then Arvod the Cursed. Uh, we've already seen him. Alright. I mean... I've got legendaries. I've got legendaries all over the place. Question is, what am I going to do? Oh, okay. Cast down. One and a black for an instant. Destroy target non-legendary creature. Yep. Great. That's That's pretty good. Is there angel you can't again? Have so much better removal than that. No, you really can't. I mean, yeah, black. I'm not going to be able to hit your commanders, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Joy is familiar. Flying historic spells cost one less. It's four for a 2-2 two -two flying bird. Bailoff Gorger. It's a shiny foil. Oh, there we go. Hey! <laughs> Joda! Now my deck building just got twice as hard. <laughs> 
Because I have no idea what I'm going to build now. <laughs> it got five times easier when he tried it. It got five it. times easier. <laughs> now I have no idea what I'm going to build. Okay, so Joda. Just, okay. Is it foil I by mean, chance? sure. Is it foil by chance? No, it's not foil. The uh, Bayloth Gorge. I think I'm getting a play set of foil Bayloth Gorgers at this rate. Though. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so let's let's pause real quickly here. I'm, and I won't pause long, but that's three five color commanders in our pod yeah <laughs> that's three mike good luck <laughs> good luck we're all playing our best spells <laughs> we're all playing our best i mean he's in salt eye so let's not you know well yeah yeah he's got he's got good stuff he's got good stuff he really does he's got some good things oh uh, i mean uh, i'm gonna be able to cast all my legendary sorceries now <laughs> Uh, Tony Blackwell, do I do I know you? Do you know me? <laughs> You're saying long time no see. It's kind of om ominous. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, uh... Oh, sorry, Mike. You're just it's not happening for you. <laughs> I mean, I'm, like I said, it's not that bad. Mishra's self replicator. Uh, it is five for a two two assembly worker. Whenever I cast a historic spell, I may pay one. If I do create a token that's a copy of it. Eh. I'm not in love with it. Oh, uh, Balda, yeah. Keeper of the Flame, which is just a red legendary, but let's face it, it's not Joda. So. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Tony, are you the... Uh, I think I know who you are. Uh, you have, like, your box that you roll for, like, colors and guilds and, like, put, put together, like, decks randomly like that. Really, really cool deck building ideas and stuff. I'm pretty sure that's who you are. Cool. He's got, um, he's got a really cool box of uh, commander decks. Nice. Guy's Blessing. Uh, target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. When it is put into your graveyard from your library, you shuffle your graveyard into your library. Once again, another CEDH card that's played in Gitrog. So yep. if you play the Blessing versus the Devil Titan list, this one's a lot cheaper than the $40 Shuffle Titans. So, um, yeah, okay. Hey, Oath of Teferi. Awesome. Um, Ooh, that... Three and two... Yeah. Sorry. Um, I still have it. I mean, I, I don't. How many, how many planeswalkers? Uh, we no, we have some. We have some good planeswalkers in here. But I mean, I'm not on any sort of planeswalker plan right now. Yeah. I can exile when it enters the battlefield. I can exile another permanent and return to the battlefield at the next end step. I can also activate uh, planeswalker abilities twice. So yeah. Hey, another slime foot. It's destiny. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Helium right. Gaming, I'm not playing in the new league on Old School. I've been enjoying people watching. I've been enjoying watching people play it, though. It looks like a lot of fun. Nice. There has to be some RuneScape talk here, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it wouldn't be RuneScape talk. It wouldn't. You wouldn't be on the stream if there wasn't RuneScape talk. Uh, yeah. uh, fungal Plots, uh, Diligent Excavator, Damping Sphere. Okay, oh. that's not bad. Damping um, Sphere. If a land is tapped for two or more, it produces colorless instead of any other type in amount, and each player, each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell they have cast this turn. So uh, everything gets more expensive. Yeah, I mean that could be a, a, a taxing effect, but the the front the the top part of that card is never gonna trigger. No, no, I'm talking about the bottom part. Yeah. So Varix Blade Wing, there's another mythic. Two and two red red with kicker three for a four four flyer. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, uh, I will create a uh, Karox blade wing, a four four dragon creature with flying. Huh? Well, I mean, with Joda, I could do anything I want now. <laughs> <laughs> I can absolutely run that. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Now here's the thing. Mana fixing in Dominaria is horrid. Yeah. It is horrid. So. Um, if you'll notice, I, I mean, they don't even have, like, the the life tap lands in Dominaria. Like, they don't even have those. So if I'm going to go five color, that's going to be extremely difficult for me to fix that. Um, so I have to be very judicious in what I'm actually doing. Anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, Damping Sphere. Uh, in chat, they um, they said that uh, it taxes Golos's ability. Damping Sphere does. Oh, it does. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're all casting. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> uh, one card Golos hate cards. <laughs> <laughs> I have to hit that. I got to get that silver bullet. All right. 
Uh, Song of Frailies. Uh, that's actually not bad. Uh, one in a green for a saga. Uh, one and two are until your next turn, creatures you control gain tap to add a mana of any color. That's pretty good. Mana fixing. Uh, yeah, and then three is put a 1-1 counter at each creature you control. They gain... Uh, those creatures gain Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible. That's really good, actually. On Sarah's Wings. And then there's that Flame of Keld again. Yeah. Ooh. Ariel, Knight of Wind Grace is my rare. Two in Orzhov for a Legendary 4-4 four, four with Vigilance. I can pay two and a white tap, create a 2-2 two, two Knight with Vigilance. Or I can pay a black and tap and tap X untapped Knights I control. Destroy target creature with power X or less. I like that it's on a stick. Yeah, the, the like fact that it just... It, it makes its, its own so tokens. Slow. It makes its own tokens, and then it procs off its own tokens is nice. It's, it's so slow. It's it is so very slow. slow. That's tough. Very slow. If that thing ever activates, though... I mean, yeah, you're right. If it ever activates, you're in trouble. But All right. Goblin Warchief, Juggernaut, 5-3 uh, for 4, Taxi's Combat, and can't be blocked by walls, so that Deep Freeze <laughs> is unblockable now. The Synergy. <laughs> the Synergy. Uh, Daring Archaeologist, 3 and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, when it enters the battlefield and return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand, whenever I cast a historic spell, I can put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. And then Whisper, Blood Liturgist. Did you say extort spell? There's extort? No, historic. Oh, historic. Historic. Oh, oh. historic. Historic. <laughs> Extort would be insane. Extort, wow. That's really good. Hey, Power Stone Shard. That's actually not bad. Memorial. Curator's Wand. Uh, two and a blue. Enchanted Permanent has Hexproof. When it leaves the battlefield, if, his if it was historic, draw two cards. Hmm. <clears throat> The Antiquities War is my rare. It's three and a blue for a saga. Uh, one and two are look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put them in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, artifact. Artifacts you control become uh, artifact creatures with a five five that are five five. Oh, I, uh, not really. I'm not really on the artifact plan right now. Yeah, there's there's a really cool one with instants and sorceries. Um, I think it, like let's let's you find an instant sorcery and then like. You get to copy copy the next like instant sorcery you cast that turn, and then you get to get something back from your graveyard. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, sacrifice true creature. Uh, Jaya Jaya's immol immolating inferno. There's another legendary sorcery. It deals X damage to each of up to three targets, and it's X and red red. So why not? <laughs> Garn of the blood flame is my other legendary. Uh, but I'm still, I, I mean, I'm pretty much probably still on Joda, so. <clears throat> uh, Fist of Death, Suffering Void, Territorial Allosaurus, uh, two, and, two green green for a 5-5, five five. that's, that's pretty good. Uh, kicker two and a green, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kick, it fights another target creature, not bad. And a foil Benelish Marshall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sick rips, bro. <laughs> uh, three whites, three three white for a three three, and other and it's an anthem effect. Other creatures I control get one one. So I mean, why not? So. Uh, Christopher oh, says, let me separate my foil rare up there. Yeah. So. Christopher says that you pulled all six legendary sorceries from the set. Oh, have I really? Well, I mean, I might play Jota just to play Legendary Sorcery Tribal. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sentinel, Weight of Memory, draw three cards. Target player puts the top three cards of the library into their graveyard. It's three blue-blue for a sorcery. Maybe. <clears throat> Joyra's, and another Marwin, actually. So. Um, what's my Mythic count been? I think I've been... I don't think I've been hitting the mythics, really. Uh, I think I got like a, I got a Varix Bladewing. I got a Mox Amber, so I mean, yeah. I really shouldn't be complaining. Uh, I got a Varix, a Mox Amber. <laughs> uh, uh, is Jota a mythic? Nope, it's rare. Wow. Like, there's maybe there's something else. Uh, Gaia's Blessing, Thal Thalid Soothsayer, Foil Land. 
Spicy. And a, and a knob on Dean of Iteration, one and a blue for a legendary 2-1. If a wizard entering the battlefield under your control causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it, it triggers an additional time. <clears throat> Not really, yeah, let's say. I haven't been hitting be the mythics. Yeah, I haven't been hitting the mythics. I've abandoned your uh, spread uh, pattern of opening the packs, and I don't know if it's better or worse. <laughs> So, probably a I'm lot sure. worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a lot worse. Warcry Phoenix, Flying Haste. Ah, oh, Rite of Bells and Lock. Two black black for a saga. Uh, create two. Uh, one and two is create two zero one clerics. And three is create a six six black demon with flying trample. And it has, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature if you can't deal six damage to you. <sighs> Three turns, get a demon, I guess. Eldez, the Cinder Wind. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one, plus one into a turn. If I didn't get a satisfactory legendary, which was nearly impossible in this set, I was I was seriously looking into her for my spell slinger. Yeah, but somebody was hoping somebody was hoping that you opened her. Uh, in chat, they said that like literally ten seconds ago too. <laughs> ah, that yeah. Good. So. Mike wants you to play a mono white with that foil rare that you don't <laughs> The Benelish Marshall. <laughs> mono white. Go all in. Go all in on mono white. Yeah, you're playing like 58 lands. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, foil blessed light. I think we are in on the mono white plan. Okay, there's a, there's a mythic. Multani. Hey. Yava Maya's avatar. Okay. Four green green for a legendary avatar, reach and trample. It gets plus one plus one for each land and you control and each land card in your graveyard. So one in green, return two lands you control your owner's hand, return Multani from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty good. I like that. Multani's awesome. Uh, sorry, Multani's awesome. Yeah, Multani is good. I like Multani. You get, to, you get to buy him back. It's so good. Yeah, that's true, actually. Like, it just doesn't go hey. away. And he's big. He's real big. Yeah, Multani gets really bust, but a lot of times Multani is a little bit more of a build around me commander because you know you want to do things like mill yourself a lot and stuff like that. Yeah, Kirk Prospector, yeah. great card. He's still fine and just you know he's just a, a like a powerful card by himself, which is like fine. Excellent. Final parting: three black black. Search your library for two cards, one in your hand and the other in your graveyard. Tutor, love it, Ooh. love it. Ooh. Grand Wardor, Grand Warlord Rada, awesome. Two and Gruel for a three-four haste. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination of red and or green until the end of turn. You don't lose the mana. That is, that's really good. I like that. Oh, so many spicy cards. What am I gonna do with myself? This is tough. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm three packs. I'm three packs left. We're down to three packs. So we're in our final countdown here. Uh, dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> Nature will spiral. Shield of the realm. Okay, Woodland Cemetery. Great. Love it. Absolutely love it. The slime the slime foot plan is back on track. Another Tatiova. Love it. Yeah, final parting is fantastic. So Absolutely great card. All right. <clears throat> uh, time of Ice. Uh, three and a blue. Tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controls on tap step. That's uh, one and two. And then three is return all tap creatures to their owner's hands. Now that's nice. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. The first eruption. Uh, it's another saga. Two and a red. Um... It's one is the first eruption deals one damage to each creature without flying. Two is add red red. And then three is sacrifice a mountain. If you do, it deals three damage to each creature. Uh, to each creature? No. That's interesting. To each creature. Yeah, it, it's it, basically you sack a mountain and it, it, yeah. it, it lightning that, bolts. That blue creature. soggy open, though, bouncing all tap creatures to their understands is yeah, really Yeah, the, the time of ice, that was... Yeah, because that's not bad. Yeah, not only does it do that, but it also like stops people from wanting to attack for a turn. 
Yep, it holds people back from attacking. That's true. Because they don't want to lose their tapped creature. Yeah. All right, last pack. This is our last one. Okay, Song of Frailies. It's the one that does the mana fixing. We already saw that one. Wild Onslaught. Uh, it's the 2 1 1 counters. Cabal Stronghold. <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah, that's not going to get me where I want to go, but that's going nice. going in your Yargle deck. <laughs> Put in my Yargle deck. That's right. Make mono black Yargo. Y'all be sorry. Uh, that's good. Uh, Shauna, this says legacy. Uh, it can't be the target of abilities, and it gets plus one, plus one for each creature. All right. Well, that was the Dominaria box. Um, this is tough. I gotta say. Um, obviously, there's the the clear choice is Joda. I think that much was obvious. So, but the thing is, where do I go? Do I go legendary sorcery? Do I? Because I got, I've got them pretty much all of them. If I, if if I didn't get them all, I got so many legendary sorceries. Question is, what route do I take? Um, it could be just a. Five color, just play all your best cards. I don't yeah. know how much synergy you can get. There might be like a spell slinger synergy you could do, like sub theme. I'm thinking, I'm thinking there might because I was seeing a lot of really good spell slinging synergy. <clears throat> what what I'm afraid of is that my spell slinging synergy is going to be completely wiped out by getting smacked in the face with giant creatures. Yeah, that's um, a problem. The thing but with you my do five have color, a lot of removal. You have a I lot do. of unconditional removal too i did i i got some really nice removal uh cast downs and um other other ones that just uh, exile target creature settle the score yawgmoth file offering a lot of really good removal was in this which was great uh, i've got bounce spells with blink of an eye um so there's there's something i'm, I'm gonna have to put my thinking cap on for this one but we're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do is we are going to take it back to Zach where he is going to do his brew of his Zendikar Rising. Yeah. I have been sorting through my cards here as best I can. Uh, I'm almost finished. Almost finished. I still just have a few. I'm just going through the uncommons now. Uh any of these duplicates? I got one. I got another one. Okay, I got a few duplicate uncommon uh, multicolor guys. I got all the common sorted out, so that's nice. And I separated them all into just the one ofs as well. Mm. Oh, will... you removed your duplicates? Okay. Yeah, I removed all my duplicates, yeah. Cool. That's also part of the reason why I wasn't talking as much as i probably could have been just trying to get, <laughs> yeah. get this ready uh, yep. i'm sure i have so uh yeah so so some people are you know we're, we're in the chat we've got people saying tatiova with maltani and kamal druidic bow seems good i agree with that Ooh. uh slime foot seems good too um i mean historic tribal uh legendaries that's not i mean i actually did get a lot of legendaries I mean, obviously every pack had one, so um, I could double down on the historic, but I'm wondering if the mana fixing is going to end up screwing me, because that is the one thing that Dominaria did not get what? right. It, it, it did not do mana very well. Yeah, but anyway. also there isn't a lot of, like, crazy multicolor stuff. It's more of just, like, here's your two-color lane, go into that lane. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right. So they don't, they don't focus on color fixing as much in those types of scenarios. Okay, so... Yep, yep. let's our, get into yours. We have our Tazri here. I kind of, I think we should go through probably the rares and the mythics first. Uh, and the uncommons. Before we start delving into commons. Uh, it depends on how much... Um, so, like, these guys are all in, obviously. Oh, not, so, not what, what theme canopy. did you decided on? I don't know. I've been sorting cards. It's I, I really. It's I'm definitely playing Tazri. I'm just gonna play all five colors. 
Uh, <laughs> why not, right? Uh, exactly, why not? So, there's a Zareth. I don't think I'm going to play him. I don't really want to... I don't think I want to do a lot of graveyard stuff. Because he requires me to... To either activate your graveyards uh, with cards in my deck. Or just, like, wait till the game goes long. And then start doing stuff uh, with your graveyards. And even then... I don't know how great he is. I mean, putting a permanent card from the graveyard on the battlefield is really nice. That's that's nothing to sneeze at. That's pretty it's good. It's nothing to sneeze um, at for sure. We'll see. We'll see if we have so, slots for him as well. The the color fixing in this deck also isn't that great. You, you have it. those duels. I those do. There's only flip. three of them. So that's that's really nice that you have access to that. Yeah. Also, also the uh, like these guys that you know just are also lands as well is a thing. So like. This guy's awesome because, like, he can just... If I don't have a green man in my hand, but I have another green spell, just boom, put him in the land, he's a green land. That's going to be awesome. Yes. Ex I, I, I love that you have that <clears throat> early and late game potential with those those lands and spells. Yeah, yeah. So, we got Omeral, Skyclave, Hierophant. Uh, whenever it or another cleric dies, uh, return stuff from my graveyard... So four mana three three life link, which is just okay. There are some life gain synergies, so I'm gonna put them over here for now. Okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Next time you cast an ancient or sorcery, it costs X less or X the number of wizards you control. Uh, yeah, well, the, as that spell resolves, or, or as that ability resolves, yeah, as, that. as the ability <clears throat> resolves, I can't imagine. So this from a from a great. gut check perspective, where do you see this deck being? Just from a gut check, no, without actually. I think it's going to be more creature centric, deep. more creature centric Creatures. with just, uh, just good value spells. So like, this probably isn't going to be that great. It also depends on. I'm doing more of like less like of one tribe and more of like, you know, all four for Tazri. <clears throat> so I don't know how many mm -hmm. wizards I'm going to have as well. Uh, plus a lot of the spells I do have already cost less, <laughs> equal to the number of creatures in my party, which is awesome. That's true. So, this guy probably won't be needed, but for now, we'll see. Um, this guy is just a great late game, just X spell creature, and he pings off of kicking spells. Uh, it's hard to pass up a fireball. Fireball type, type card. It's really hard to do that. So, yeah. let me get these. I'm going to put this Royal Chaser into the side for now. Let me get this all out of here. Off to the side so we can start getting some stuff laid out. Commons, uncommons. I know that I definitely saw a big land synergy. I mean, obviously that's a silly thing to say because... You know, it's Zendikar, of course it's lands, but you were pulling some decent stuff with land. There were, there were, for sure. There were some cool ones. I also got this really yeah. nice five-color land for uh, casting clerics, rogues, warriors, and wizards, and activating yeah, so you... the abilities of those cards as well, which is really nice. Yeah, super nice. So we're so... going to have Tazri over here in the corner. Can you see him? There we go. There's Tazri. So... Gonna cut these spells. I'm gonna put my cuts underneath Tazri. So we had this sweet big X spell, big X spell creature. Awesome Wrath, which is great. Got our Planeswalker. That guy's awesome. I got a Shia plus plus this Wrath is just insane, just insane. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> that's that's so good so. together. Two, three, four, five, six. And they're also, let's face it, they're just playing good on their own. So that's nice too. They are, which is very important as well. And a scoot swarm. There we go. So we have the squad commander. Makes tokens. He's a warrior. It's great. We have this myriad con uh, construct. Kicker spell. Makes tokens when it dies. Sac sacrifice X lands for each land. You sacrifice this way, draw a card. You may put X lands. I don't know. I'm going to put this in like a maybe pile down here. I don't know how much like landfall I want to go. I want to be more of just like I'm playing these landfall cards 
like this Felidar retreat and this Lotus Cobra just because they're just good by themselves, like the Scoot Swarm. Yeah, you like got it. Yeah, Scoot Braga. Swarm. I mean, what, what? I mean, read Scoot Swarm for me again. What is it? The one where you create a copy of it? Yeah. Uh, so landfall into the battlefield. Uh, create a one-one green insect creature token. <laughs> If you control six or more lands, create a copy that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. Yeah, so it just gets that. So it's the six land threshold. That's what it is. Yeah, so so far I have one, two, three cards that ping that make tokens. It's interesting. Um, uh, a Shia plus Swarm is infinite. Is it? Yeah. Because <laughs> if another a, a land enters with a Shia, Scoot Swarm, you put another... <laughs> that is infinite. Oh, uh, that's, that's actually a that's problem. Cool. That's that's a bad infinite because it stalls the game out because it's not a main ability. Yeah, it draws the game. Oh, that's brutal. That's so good. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> You're like, ah, it's time for the game to be over. Let's just do this. <laughs> okay, so whoever asked about infinite combos in a set, we have one here. Uh, it's not very good. <laughs> we, we, it, we did it, guys. We <laughs> did it. The game draws out, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> Four mana kill any creature. Two mana counter. It's a cleric. Awesome. Um, the three mana flying death touch lifelink rogue vampire. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the maybe death touch. Double. Death touch is a, is a form of removal, and it's also a rattlesnake. You know, like oh yeah. Do you really want to sing, send your seven seven into me? It's because also, kill it's it also it double country. black. Which is a big oh, thing for me. Oh, okay. That that changes things. Like, how often am I going to have double black on three? Not very often. Not very yeah. often. I mean, but that's what I'm saying. You know, it'd be a late late game kind of card. But anyway. Yeah. So we got our land. We got a land here. It's awesome. Uh, this kicker spell is sweet. Uh, what's this guy? Uh, two, two, uh, two mana, two, one rogue that potentially draws cards. Got to play it. Uh, two mana oh. cleric that you can kick it. And oh, reanimate a creature. Yeah, that's just what's great. the kicker on it? Three and a black, so six. So four, four black, kicker? black. So six mana for two one minus lifelink, and then you reanimate a creature. It's nice. Gotta, it's got to be great. Yeah. Um. Whenever you cast a kick spell, draw loot, and then when it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards, reveal a kicker. Spell the kicker. So that's got to be great as well. well. I have a one mana guy. Power to cool number creatures in your party at the beginning come out on your turn if your party target creature gets pulse on pulse on flying. I'm not very excited about this card. Not very excited about it at all. Yeah. I, I that that doesn't do anything for me. Just I'm I am just gonna cut it. It's just it's not high enough impact. If it was like if you had a full party and like gave like counters on all your creatures, like get in my deck, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, this five mana exile all creatures and planeswalkers CMC three or less from battlefield and graveyard. I don't know if I like it. I'm making a lot of tokens. Uh, this guy kills a creature when it comes into play. It's got to be great. Mimic got to be great. Um, four mana kicker guy, which is awesome. My third land Archon of Amiria. I don't know if I'm gonna play it. You think you thinking no on Archon? <sighs> I don't know how. Oh, it's actually hoses Golos activations. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it hoses Golos. Which is a thing. Uh, we're, we're so we're running Joda, the anti Golos. How does Joda read for her activation or his activation? Uh, Joda reads you may pay Wooberg rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. Oh, okay. Okay. Um Orin Reef Ooze does counters, plus one, plus one counter things. I don't know how many things I do with counters on them. I do have Feldar Retreat that I think is counters all my creatures. Plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. And they gain Vigilance on a turn. So that's an interesting synergy with like tokens mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Roiling Vortex also hates on Golos really hard. Golos activations. <laughs> whenever <laughs> whenever a player casts a spell, no mana was spent to cast it. It deals five damage to that player. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna leave these in the deck for now. I'm gonna leave them in here. I mean, yeah, you can always cut them later. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, they hit on Golos really, really well, so. Let's get these out of the way. Get these out of the way. Don't much care for those cards. Here are the foil cards that we opened. Dauntless Unity, one and a white creature control with plus one, plus one. The trainer spells kick, they get plus two, plus one. Not really looking for that sort of effect. Uh, three minute, three, three, kick it. Um, return a kick thing from my graveyard to my hand. I mean, if you're if you're going in under the kicker theme. It could be a sub theme, but like it's a plant elemental, so it doesn't. I can't find it off of my commander, which is a thing. Wow. And like, I just want to play like, like if this had an ability when it was in play that like kick a spell and like something happens, yeah, this just gets mm -hmm. kicker cards back, which I don't have that many up anyways. I don't think. So we'll see. Like for like for instance, like this Coral Helm Chronicler is a wizard in addition to having kicker stuff on it. So like this card's awesome in comparison to the other one because it's already doing yep. my main theme of Tazri party stuff. And then mm -hmm. has kicker sub synergies, which I like yeah. a lot. Um, two three vigilance landfall I'll get a counter on it. Not super high impact. Uh, no fling. I don't think so. Uh, cast instant sorcery. It's a wizard. I don't know, but it's only until end of turn. Not high on that card. Counter target creature planeswalker spell. And this is controller pays two. They have eight or more cards in their graveyard. So it's, it's counterspell interaction. Put it in there. <clears throat> uh, Tazim Raptor, a bird that brings a land back. Not high on that card. Uh, Rogue, next to the creature in your party. Okay, so this is a removal, quote removal spell. It's not that great. It's a 3 2. Ugh, it's pretty rough. <laughs> and it gives Ugh. max of one <laughs> minus four minus four. That seems really bad. Landfall, gain of life, and we're back to the start. Okay. <sighs> Done with those. Uh, those are duplicates. Can't play with those. Let's get to the uncommons here. Okay. Got some uncommon cards. So an enchantment. Uh, enters a battlefield. If it was kicked, it gets make a 2-2 two -two <coughs> bird. Uh, and then whenever you cast a kick spell, create a 2-2. Two -two. So I'm going to put this in the maybe, maybe section. We'll see how many kick spells we have at the end. Oh, this card's awesome. Okay. The Skyclave Plunder. You just draw cards oh, to the, yes. your, your party. Absolutely. That's got to be just, just instant include. Um, one Wonder Flying Rogue. It's a rogue. Adds to the party. Rogue's a party one, right? Yeah, Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, Wizard, or Ally. Mm -hmm. So it adds to the party. Uh, deals common damage to a player, they mill a card, and then you can sack it, draw a card, only if somebody has eight or more in their graveyard. It's not a super high impact card. Let's put it on maybe for now. Yeah, it's maybe, and then maybe. Yeah, if I need more rogues, I probably will play it. <clears throat> uh, look at the top six cards of your library, remember you'll insert a sorcery card from among them, put it into your hand, that's the body of your library in a random order. It can also be a land. I'm going to say yes for now on this. You thinking so? Uh, yeah. For now, for now. We'll see, we'll see how many I come out to. Creatures your opponent control, get minus two minus oh until in a turn. I'm not super high on that. Uh, I got a four spike here that can also be a land. I actually like that a lot. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm big on that one. I like that one. I like that a lot. People are going to be tapping out quite a bit for stuff. Uh, counter non creature spell. Oh, for uh, basically pay X where X is the number of creatures in my party. Yeah, for one mana. Absolutely. Uh, whenever you cast a kick spell, scry two. It's also a five mana, four four flyer. Let's do that. I got like a I got like a flyer synergy sort of thing happening here too. All right. Whenever you cast an extra sorcery, gains flying tool into turn. That's not that great. It's a wizard. Mm -hmm. uh, not that great. We'll see. Um, uh, Christopher in chat says the bird is good for your modal double face cards. Uh, which bird? Um, the one that you uh, the, 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 that you were just talking about. Ah, oh, I, I the Roost of Drakes, Roost of Drakes. Yes. Uh, I don't understand. Ah, well, never mind then. Keep going. <laughs> Bounce them back for... 
cash for your spells. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Ruin Crab. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, here we go. Um, tap another tap Rogue. This creature can't be blocked. When I deal this combat damage to a player, draw a card. Get in my deck. <laughs> uh, uh, these are all... Whenever you guys are interested in sorcery, if you or wizard, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, that's fine. That's fine. Three mana, two, two flyer. And it's a wizard. I'm in yeah. for that. We have uh, visions already. Oh, this card is going to be awesome. This just steal, steal a creature. Uh, sorcery. That's going to be great. And then the rest of these are duplicates. Okay, we got... We'll save multicolor and colorless for last. We got some black spells here. Black has been. Mm, I don't like this double black card very much. It's gonna be awkward. It's gonna be really awkward. It's gonna be a rough mana base. <laughs> yep. That's the and that, that's the tough part. Three mana take away like the best card in their hands. Got to be great. It's got to be great, and yeah. it helps fix for black. Oddly enough, that's so weird that the black spells hit help fix for black. It's so weird. Yeah, actually, that is a bit weird. There's a six mana cost one less uh, reach. Okay, so yeah. Alex in chat that says it's the two white bird that bounces a land on ETB. You can play the modal double face cards early, bounce it back to your hand, then play its other side later in the game. Ooh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, that's not bad. That is interesting. Oh. Crap, I dropped, I dropped the cards! Oh, no! Oh, shenanigans! <laughs> uh, here it is. The raptor. I like that. That's interesting. We'll see. We'll put it in for now. Put it in for now. Why not, right? Yeah, why not? I mean, we, we're we going to be scraping the bottom of the barrel anyways, probably. For a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, maybe. We'll see. Uh, an edict effect, three mana edict effect. It's probably fine, maybe. It's a cleric. Goes well with Aura. Uh, choose her creature, lose life, and you save it. Okay, we'll see about that one. I like it a lot more, too, because it's a land, the, the modal flip guy. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let the form blight. One in a black, enchant a land. ATB draw card, it's gotta be great. Enchanted Chan land loses all land types and abilities and has uh, one make a colorless and pay a life at one mana of any color. Oh. Yeah, that's mana fixing. And it draws a card. Mm hmm. Oh, it's so awkward that it's black, though. Yeah. That's weird. Not, that's a I'm weird ability for a black, a black land, uh, enchantment. <laughs> yeah, actually, it really is. Really is. Cards. Ooh, a number, another discard effect. It's also a two mana, one two rogue. Do you need to have a high, probably a high number of different, different uh, creature types too? Whenever you gain um, life, put a counter on this guy. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. It's a three three flyer. It gets bigger. It's piqued my interest at that. At just that. As it, I mean, the moment it says draw a card on it, you're like, snap include automatically. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to beat drawing a card. <laughs> <clears throat> That's actually a good point. It's hard to beat drawing a card. Oh, man. This, like, wants to be an aristocrat thing with counters. I'm not into that card. Each opponent loses four life and you gain four life. It's a modal flip guy. What's the flip on the other side? Uh, it's a land. Just just a land. Like I said, there is zero opportunity cost. I know. It's weird. It's really so weird. So you're just like, sure, I'll put it in there. It'll just be a land unless I want it to be something better. And that's what I mean. That's why those cards are actually really good. Oh, this guy can get Death Touch. He also mills. We'll see about that. He has a rogue, so we'll see. Rogues are things. Uh, that pings off of having ink, ink cards. Already have one of those. Just short turret creature, planeswalker. Yep, and you kick it and kill anything. Uh, we mm -hmm. already have a disciple. And okay, on to duplicates. Okay, moving on to the greatest color ever ever achieved: green. Uh, red. Green. 
It's not, not close by a red. lot. Not close were, by a lot. I, mean, I thought you were already in red. What? <laughs> I'm splashing a double red card at the moment. <laughs> and a a card that hates on... Uh, <laughs> oh, love hates it. It's on Folger's deck. Uh, <laughs> hates on, we're, why is everybody so on Golos? They're like, we've got to. We've got to do that. So. Well, I mean, it's just it's just happening, you know. It's just it's just the way the way it is. Yep. All right. So some people in the chat are asking. So you know, kind of how did this boxing league work? So essentially, for those of you who don't know, you you basically you open a box. Uh, everyone in the pod chooses a different box from a set that was standard legal at one point. So what that means is that you can't open a master set, you can't open Battle Bond or you know Commander Legends that's coming out. It has to have been a set that was standard legal at one point. For example, I did Dominaria. Zach is doing uh, Zendikar Rising tonight. Uh, and then each week, you will add six packs of another set that you haven't already opened yet. So what that means is I open Dominaria, so the next, after we build our decks and play according just to the regular rules of Commander, Legendary Creature, Singleton Format, one of each, all that kind of stuff, um, we will add six more packs to our, our pool of cards and then be able to make swaps and then do that. So I did Dominaria this time, which means that, for example, next week I might say War of the Spark. And then the next week after that, I might say Zendikar Rising. But I can't do Dominaria and then Dominaria again. I have to I have to mix it up each time. So that's a very basic setup. Anyway, go ahead, Zach. Yep, just looking through some uh, more uncommons. Here, I have an explosive vegetation with Kicker on it. That's going to be awesome. Uh, fight spell. Modal, modal fight spell. Or not modal fight spell, but the, 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 land, the land flip guy. All right, mm. uh, if it's equipped as hate, no thank you. Whenever Vanguard attacks, uh, target creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal number of warriors you control can't block. Uh, real medium. We have a threat and effect. I mean, for now. Steel Golos, you're in five colors. That's true. It's true. Well, I mean, it, it only takes you for a turn. We'll see. Ah. And then it gives it back. But it's another land one, so like the number of lands I can play is actually like lower, probably. Uh Night Running really deals content to a player except the top of your library, you may play it. Oh yeah, that card's awesome. That card's <laughs> sweet. Whenever you cast an air sorcery, no thank you. Kicker. Uh can deal up to two damage each creature. I have a lot of little dudes, and I'm playing tokens. I don't know how good that's gonna be. Uh one damage to any target. Mm. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not sure how much I'm feeling the tokens right now in your themes. Like, I yeah. feel it's almost detracting from what you're trying to do with other stuff. Well, they're like the thing is, is like the tokens that are here are just sort of they're just incidental. Mm -hmm. They're that's all they are. It's not like there's a card that's like specifically making tokens and only doing that. Uh, I mean this this retreat makes tokens on landfall and, and also busts my whole team. This guy, when he mm -hmm. dies, makes a bunch of tokens. I think it's a... Uh, it might be one or two. Uh, uh, like the the Scoot, the Scoot Swarm. Like, it's just fun. It's just a good card. Yeah, I mean, I think Scoot Swarm, I know it's technically a token, but I think that really is in more of a different theme. Than that is true. Theme. That is like, true. So you, I might not want to have it You're doing something way different. I might not want to have it because of a Shia, because then it just draws the game if they ever can't ever play them both. Ah! Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> All right, let's get this little wrath in here then. Uh, here it is. All right, four damage to a creature, planeswalker. Yes, sir. Uh, that's really loose. Thank you. And so, battle deals X damage to a creature, planeswalker, X number of creatures in your party. That's like kind of exactly what I want. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really digging the party thing. I really, I think yeah. it's going to do well because if nothing else, you know, let's just say you're stalling out, just just crack your commander and start digging for party members. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, wow, it's a lot of duplicates in the red uncommons actually. Okay, we got one color left, which is white, and we got commons, but we'll see. Uh, landfall, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. It doesn't have, and it gets flying till end of turn. I'm not really high on that card. 
Uh, three mana land into the battlefield. Put uh, Anthem effect. Uh, Myriad Captain. Four mana, one one. Flying Vigilance into the battlefield. Uh, Pulse of Castle for each counter in your party. Yeah, those party synergies. Target creature control mm-hmm. begins protection of the color of your choice until end of turn. That could be randomly good. Uh, ETB gain two life. Oh, thank you. Duplicate. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, counter on it. It's three minutes, three, two. Uh, it's actually just one other warrior. Uh, it's... It's not that high impact, but technically a thing. Ooh. Yeah. This card gets kicked. You tap up to two creatures, and it's a 1-1 flyer. That could be a cool little tempo thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, deals damage equal to under creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. Yep. Double strike. Uh, equip warriors you control have double strike. Eh. Seems a little sus. I think I have like one or a few equipments. I might put, I might have a couple equipments for that actually. We'll see about that. We have that protection spell already. Uh, to two target creatures, you get plus X plus X for X the number of creatures in your party. Eh. Oh, here we go. This card's awesome. That's a blue green ring. Whenever you mm-hmm. gain life for the first time each turn, make a one one. Uh, gives my cl- uh, random cleric a uh, one one. That could be a thing. Or lifelink, sorry. This is five color jank for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love five color jank though. Um, I don't know. This guy's interesting. He kind of helps to quote ramp, but he costs green white to get out. He can return mm-hmm. lands for extra landfall. I don't know. Uh, whenever another cleric enters the battlefield, whatever, whenever you gain life for the first time, each turn put a counter on this guy. I don't know how much life gain stuff I have. He has a cleric, so we'll see. Um, yep, this equipment's insane. Another ramp guy, also does kick spell stuff. Landfall guy's not very good. Whenever Moss Pit Skeleton is kicked, enter the battlefield three counters on it. It's a plant and a skeleton. It's a random kick card. I'm not into it. Not into that. Not feeling it. This guy's awesome. Oops. Got those mixed up. There's a lot of cards here, surprisingly. Um Yeah, man. <laughs> How about that? Right. I don't know how I feel about that. Sacrifice a creature, draw a card. As long as you control a cleric, whenever a creature dies. Eh. It's weird. It's a lot of really weird synergies, like sub synergies. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. just trying to pull in like different directions with each uh color pair. Um, so in the chat, um, so Ashaya only makes non-token creatures land, so Scoot Swarm doesn't make the feedback loop. Oh, it does so, not? Okay. Yeah, because it's non-token, and Scoot Swarm makes a token. They pro- yeah, probably know. did that just for that, in all honesty. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, usually tokens is what makes things go nutty pretty quickly. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, let's see here then. So, oh, there's commons to go through jeez oh man i'm surprised you didn't almost start with the commons i don't know there's only so many good ones that's a good point cost less for a party wait okay 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 enters the battlefield tapped whenever enters the battlefield draw a card it says draw a card get in my deck Whenever it's kicked into the battlefield, two counters on it. It's three minutes, two, three. Gargoyle. And I didn't do it. I like this kite sail. Gifts of flying is yeah. surprisingly good. Surprisingly good mm-hmm. and very re- surprisingly relevant. Yep. Utility knife. No thank you. That counts as a bunch of different creature types. 
Strike creature power three or less. Yes. Uh, cool little combat trick. Uh, target creature gains indestructible to end a turn. Draw a card. Uh, I think there's a counter on it. Nah, I'm good. Enters the battlefield. Mill. It's a three minute two one rogue. No thank you. Any more cards. No thank you. Target opponent mills two cards. No thank you. Uh, we regain life. No thank you. These are all just like awkward casting costs as well. Yeah. Like there's already a, like a ton of cards here. This we're kind of just digging through the the shaft here to see what is just good enough. Each opponent was mm -hmm. X the number of creatures in your party. Hey, that's a thing. It's a cleric. Does stuff. Uh, counters. Each creature control the counter is whatever. So. Chris in chat is asking, is it five color stuff or five color party? You know, we're trying to figure that out. So far it's looking like five color party with just other stuff as well. Okay. There's a lot of party spells, like costs one less for party or for each party member. Each party member costs less, costs less for each party member. So that is, that is a thing. So we do have to, I'm just trying to figure out um, what all is just blanket good, right? And then go from yep. there. It, like, this is a bat that's, like, whatever. So, not a party member. Start target creature. Oh, yeah. And then lose life. That's fine. Uh, death Touch is only control another rogue. That's interesting. Randomly having Death Touch is good. That's, like, basically a removal spell. Mm-hmm. That's not very good. Assistance. Yeah, that is true. So Chris in chat says, you know, sometimes the how good a party is is really dependent upon the rares that you get in this set. Yeah, potentially, potentially. I don't know. I haven't played this set before, so I think they have some good ones, though. I think they have some good ones. Mm -hmm. They have some good stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Look at top four cards of your library. Put two of them in your hand. There's the bottom of your library. Any order. It's a draw spell. It's interesting. Turn to a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. The spell's kicked. Return two creature cards. Always good. Yeah. For, good for recursion. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, two damage to a creature or planeswalker or destroy an artifact. Golos is an artifact. FYI. Golos is an artifact. I'm going to put it in here for now. I know there's a, a three mana naturalize and kill a creature of flying. So that's also a thing. Yep. You're right. Oh, three damage to any target, you kick it, deals five damage instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, deals four damage to target creature and X damage to its controller or X number of creatures in your party. It's fine. I'll put it in here for now, but I think some of the removal I have is a little better than that. Just kick and haste. That's not that great. Uh, creatures, control. creatures you control have haste? I did not expect that line of text hmm interesting I'm gonna put it here for interesting purposes <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's four damage to target creature that blocked this turn that's ah, yes it does damage okay we'll see Kill land, landfall, whatever. Target creature power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Is that relevant for anything? Uh, how many weenies do you have in there? Quite a few, but it's really... There's a one guy that says draw a card when you do damage. Is he two? Yeah, he's got two power. I'm going to put him in here. He's two to activate, though, so that's a little... Not that great. Target creature gets plus yeah. three, plus two until it turns to scry one. To turn that into a removal spell. Tormenting voice. Probably good enough. I don't know. It's, it goes through my deck. Um, two mana rummage once. I don't know. Turn it land. Smite the monstrous is great. Uh, gain two life for each creature in your party. Five mana, three, four. That could be interesting. I'm not super high on gain life cards. But uh, that's, yeah, potentially, that's potentially gain 10 life, though. Uh, I mean, on a ceiling perspective, sure. Yeah. Ceilings, yeah. 
I mean, I, I've, I've never been in, I've never been on a life game train. I've just, that's just not me. I, I don't think they, I don't think they're great. Usually they're not, but it is a 3-4 flyer, so we'll see. And I'm not like super high on it by any means, but... Twice number choose target attacking blocking creature deals damage to that creature equal to twice number of creatures in your party. That sounds awful. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, that's so. I mean, it has to be attacking or blocking, and I have to have like creatures on the battlefield of like varying creature types. Like that sounds way too conditional. Yeah. So Rosetta in chat says, "Funny enough, while I got a foil of the five cardy." Five color party commander. It was Grackma, and that excited me to make a deck. <laughs> I like it. Grackma. Ooh, disenchant. Do I play disenchant? I don't know. No, disenchant's good. That's straight up good. Probably good. It kills Golos. <laughs> <laughs> sure does, doesn't it? Silver bullet Golos, baby. Dude, we came back to it. <laughs> <laughs> One one death so, touch rogue for one sure for one yeah that's not horrible death touch that's actually really good because when Mike is trying to sail in with his really really big creatures yeah you know, one one death touch can just trade really well huge tempo swing I'm really in for this card scale the heights two and a green sorcery put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature. Gain two life, you may play an additional land this turn, and draw a card. Wow. That does a lot. That really does a lot. Search your library for a basic um, land ability, put it in your hand, shuffle your library, this spells kick, search your library for two basic lands instead of one. Yeah. What is that card's name? Re which one? The first one or second one? The the second one that says the with the kick. Uh, Reclaim the Wastes. That's, I have one that's called Grow from the Ashes. It's like literally the exact same thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's wild. Anyway, uh, so Alex, uh, Alex in chat says, when will these games be played? So t tonight's stream was the second session of our stream where uh, last night we, uh, Folger and Mike, both cracked their boxes and brewed their decks. Tonight is obviously it's Zach and I cracking bo our boxes and brewing our decks. Uh, next week we are going to be recording the games. Uh, so we'll be doing that next week. And then uh, we will be... Um, and then we'll put those out. Um, we haven't a hundred percent, uh, we haven't a hundred percent decided if it's going to be live streamed or not. Um, we're thinking about turning it into a gameplay episode. Uh, however, we might put out a community poll on our YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, and you guys can tell us whether or not you want it as a gameplay episode, which would be, you know, cut edited and narrated, or if you want it as a live stream. So we would love to hear your guys' feedback on that. So, uh, look out for that in the very near future. Yes, all of those things. All of those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, negate. Get in my deck. <laughs> uh, negate. Oh, so good. The royal, so get in my deck. Oh, so good. So good. Ooh, Glacial Grasp is not bad. It's a uh, two and a blue instant. Tap target creature, controller mills two cards. Mill strategy. And then Mil. that creature does an untap during his controller's next untap step and get, wait for it. Draw a card. You have a lot of those. I mean, that set has a lot of that. Oh, I got a divination with kicker. Draw three. Okay. The one thing that I wasn't, I mean, the tapping a creature. I mean, I'm not. I'm not in love with that. But tapping down a creature to prevent a, you know, someone alpha striking you. That's. I mean, that's not a bad. It's strategy. a. It's a tempo. It's a tempo. Uh, yeah. Card. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Two minute instant speed scry two, then draw a card. Okay. That card's awesome. That is good. Uh it's that it's the uh the yeah, two mana Yeah, it's a two mana preordain, right? Yeah. Yep. To escape return up to one turret creature. Uh... It's a wizard. I actually like that. Six mana for uh a mana war. Mana war effect? Yeah. Six mana you said? Yeah, you kick it for uh, for two and a blue. So total, total what's his, what's four. His, what's his power toughness? It's a three two. It's a little better. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm not in love with that, but it's not my deck. So <laughs> by all means. Hey, look, man. I'm just trying to figure. I mean, it's like it's like this is inter It's like 
broad stroke stuff right now. That's fair. That's Just fair. Kicked. Oh, that's technically removal. Uh, can I trigger two? Oh, we already have one of those. Okay. Um, two and a half. Okay. I have all of my stuff here. How about mm -hmm. we switch over to you to okay. go through your stuff, and then I'll sort through through this stuff a little little finer here and figure out what I'm doing. Right. Sounds good. All right, so let me know when it's back on me. Yep, it's on you. All right, make sure your headphones doesn't fall out again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be right back with my Matthew's restroom, though. No worries. Uh, so, all right, so obviously I'm going to be going with Joda because it's going to be five go five color things that are great. Um, so what I'm looking at and aiming for here is I'm probably going to go the legendary sorcery route, um, but I'm also going to go pretty heavy into removal. Um, the thing that I do fear about the five color strategy is basically my mana fixing is 100% abysmal. It is bad because Dominaria just doesn't have those those dual lands, even those tapped ones. So I'm I'm in bad shape when it comes to that. So we'll start with the lands. Basically, I did pull three dual lands, and I'll put all three in just for the sake of the fact that it's Joda. So I got Woodland Cemetery, Isolated Chapel, and Sulphur Falls. I'm going to put one of each of the memorials in there as well. Unity, Folly, Glory, War, and Genius. I mean, they're tapped lands, and they only tap for the one color. But they, I mean, they all have an upside. Uh, you know, Recursion, Glory gets the soldiers, I can destroy a land, I can draw two cards. So I like all that. I'm really on the fence about Zalfir and Void, I, the Scry one, but man, Colorless, that's, I mean, I'm just not sure if that one's going to make the cut. So that's definitely a maybe board kind of thing. Um, so, so Joda, and then we're going to, uh, I've kind of, I sifted through all the cards to kind of give me my short list. Um, and what it boiled down to was I used the basic, uh, the old school, uh, uh, bread concept when it comes to drafting. That's the bombs, removal, evasion, attackers, defenders. Uh, and that's what kind of gave me my short list while trying to adhere a little bit more to a theme. Um, I saw that there were certain, there was three colors that bubbled to the top. Of course it was Sultai. Um, however, I still got some tertiary colors as well. So that's why Joda's going to work out for me. Um, We'll start with the artifacts. Uh, not all of these are making it. These are all just my short list. I also have a maybe board over here that we'll touch on. Obviously, Helm of the Host, because why Why wouldn't I put Helm of the Host in here? Uh, Mox Amber, I'm going to put that in here. I mean, even if I'm not casting my commander, you'll see that I have multiple legendaries. Gilded Lotus. Um, I have Power Stone Shard, uh, which allows me to tap for colorless. It's just a ramp. And then I have the Skittering Surveyor. Uh, it's not ramp, it's fixing. I wish that I could do something better, but right now I feel like my mana base is going to desperately need some sort of fixing. Because basically, with the exception of these, literally, not joking, less than 10 non-basic lands, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on a basic land strategy for what, what is going to be a five-color deck. So I think Skittering Surveyor is going to help me here. Um, a couple that are on the fringe here, we have Black Blade Reforge, which is, you know... I mean, it's, you know, it gets better late game, quick legendary, icy manipulator, still on the cusp, and also damping sphere. Uh, I like the idea that damping sphere prevents people from getting out of control, but I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to end up getting used. Yes, it's cool that they, oh, silver bullet golos, you know, but I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to get. Uh, let's move into the multicolored. We have Primeval's Gr Glorious Reverse. It's, it's one of those legendary sorceries. Wrath, uh, Compassion, Ship's Mage. Uh, my Historic Spells uh, have Flash, and it has Flash, meaning that you know, all of my legendary stuff will now have Flash. Arvod the Cursed, uh, Death Touch, and Lifelink. So if any big beaters are coming my way, I can trade with them. And my other legendary creatures get bigger, which is nice. Um, so Grand Wardor Warlord Rada. Uh, it's basically, it's going to give me that ramp whenever my creatures are, uh, tapped and attacking. Uh, it's only in Gruul, but, I mean, you take what you can get, of course. Um, and then I have Tatiova, Benthic Druid. I mean, she doesn't need an introduction. We all know what she does. <laughs> you draw, draw a card, put a land into play. Uh, it's so good. Uh, so those are the five, uh, multicolored, uh, 
Um, ooh, where is it? Uh, land of War Scout. Uh, you put a land card from Hand of the Battlefield. Also grows great with Tatiova. Um, I've got Song of Fraley's for an additional mana fixing. So uh, lore one and two makes all of my creatures into Birds of Paradise, which is nice. Uh, I've got Land of War Envoy if I need to get that other color. So it's the one green tap. Uh, it's one green to sink into add a man of any color. So I like that for the fixing. Um, Adventurous Impulse. Uh, it's one green for a sorcery, and I can look at the top three, reveal a creature or land. I like that. like being able to dig through my deck. Good velocity, and it's only one, so I like that. Um, I've Then I'm getting into uh, Grow from the Ashes. It's the one with the kicker. So early on, I can search for a basic land, put it on the battlefield. It helps me fix and ramp. Um, later on, I can find two, which is even better, so it, it scales well. And then I have a couple of tertiary ones, and then we'll get into some of the bigger ones. So Natural Spiral, return target permanent from my graveyard to my hand. Basically get something back that I've lost. Ancient Animus is a really cool removal spell. Uh, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control if it's legendary, and then it fights a creature an opponent controls, and so it's an instant. I have Kamal's Druidic Val. It's the X, it's the legendary sorcery. So X green green, and I can it's kind of like a Jenny way for legendaries and lands. Um and then I have two uh, kind of uh, big top-end ones. I've got Multani, Yavamaya's Avatar, and Gron the Lonely King. This is the one that's a 5-5 five, five for 6. And then if I, I kick it, uh, which is for 9, it becomes a 10-10 that attacks for a 20-20. So that is my green cards. So that one was, I, I was kind of heavy in the green cards. Um, moving into the red, super light in red. It's all, it's all removal. Fight with fire. Five damage to a creature, and I can kick it to deal 10 damage divided. I've got Fiery Intervention, four and a red to destroy, deal five damage to a creature or destroy target artifact. And then Jaya's Immolating Inferno, which is the X sink into three targets. And it's a legendary sorcery as well. So that one's a very light one. White is even lighter. It's literally one. <laughs> it's Urza's Ruinous Blast. Exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. I actually might cut this because... I mean, your creatures are going to stay on the battlefield, and I I just think that everyone's going to be able to break parity with me against the legendaries. I'm going to have more legendaries, which is nice, but, you know, Golos is just going to be able to outvalue me. Uh, I mean, Brokos isn't really going to do anything, but uh, Tazri, uh, she's going to be able to start to get ahead of me as well. Um, so we'll see about that one. Um, next one, we have Black. Uh, we've got Yargle, because <laughs> Yargle's great. I love me some Yargle. Uh, but it's a 9-3. So if someone wants to run into me, uh, they'll have to run into a 9-3. So that's, I like that. Um, so a cast down, destroy target non-legendary creature, just great removal. It's an instant. Eviscerate, it's a sorcery, destroy target creature for four. I love it. Um, we have Dark Bargain. Uh, this is three and a black for an instant. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two into your hand and the other two into your grave and the other into your graveyard, and then it deals two damage to me. So I basically once again get to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, it gets you know I, I mean it deals two damage and it's four, but I get to get better velocity that way. Uh, settle the score. Another removal. Exile target creature. Uh, final uh, divest. Uh, target player reveals their hand. You choose an artifact or creature from it. They discard that card. I love that being a turn one. Get rid of your really good creature because this is going to be a heavy creature meta. I like that silver bullet. Um, I have final parting. Basically search for two cards. Uh, one into the graveyard, one in my hand. That's amazing. Um, I have Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. So one, one target creature, Planeswalker, from graveyard to the battlefield. A graveyard, so that's anybody's. So I can put anybody's onto the under my control, and then I can destroy a creature or planeswalker. So I like that too. So that's removal and recursion, and then whisper blood liturgist. So not sure if this one's going to end up in here or not, but it's basically tap, sacrifice two creatures, and return target creature from my graveyard to the battlefield. So if I lose something, I can get it back. So I'm I'm kind of liking that recursion aspect, and then finally we have blue. So here we have. Um, uh, some more of our removal and some draw. We'll kind of start on the low end. We have Blink of an Eye, which is, you know, the one where you can kick it and draw a card and return an online permanent. Rescue, if somebody's looking to destroy something of mine, I can return it to my hand for one. 
Deep Freeze. This is the aura where basically it basically becomes a 0-4 with Defender and loses all of its other abilities. So Golos is now a 0-4, or Brokos is now a 0-4, or Tastry is a 0-4. Um, opt as you know, scry one, draw a card. Divination, draw two cards. Uh, unwind, we uh, counter target non creature spell and untap three lands, so it's, it's pseudo free. Syncopate, X and a blue, counter target spell and exile if it gets countered. And then we have uh, in Bolus's clutches, it's the six costing one where I control the permanent. So, whatever that permanent might be, maybe it's a commander, maybe it's something really good, uh, and I can gain some advantage from gaining control of it. Uh, I have I. I did decide to put the Mirari Conjecture in here, mostly because it says return target. It, uh, it's the five. It's four and a blue for a saga, and it's return an uh, instant card, return a sorcery card, and then lore counter three is if whenever you cast one, copy it. So there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, I've got a saga strategy going on here, um, and I could get those sagas back. I've got removal. I've got draw. I've got a decent amount of these spells that can really help me out. And to live the dream to be able to cast uh, on Saga 3, Karn's Temporal Sundering, <laughs> take two turns and bounce two, land, uh, two permits would be fantastic. And then finally, I have Slin Vada, the Rising Deep. Uh, it basically, it's the 8 costing 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, it's that big creature to help against Mike's Akoria stuff, uh, some of the bigger creatures that might become threats. Uh, I also, you know, I can reanimate this with maybe Whisper or something like that. But it's basically that top end thing in case I need it. Um, so that is my short list of what kind of I have. Now, I believe I have about 50 cards here. And so we have kind of 10 slots. I'm going to run 40 lands. Um, so there's, we already talked about these. Uh, and so some of the things on the short list were uh, Sahili, Voice of Planning. Um, the Bard, Steward of Argive. Uh, Bard is 2 4. Uh, is two and two white for a two four vigilance and creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless they pay one for each of those attacking creatures so it's it's like a, a propaganda light um so if i can keep people off of me because i'm going to be a little heavier in spells that i might see but this is why it's kind of in our my my short list right now sahili voice uh sahali voice of plenty uh four for a three four and all of my creatures I have Hexproof, and I have Hexproof. I really, really like that. Um, so I'm. this is definitely a short list kind of thing. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to make the cut. Uh, I like that it's not super restrictive in its cost, but I'm not running a lot of white, which means I can't have a whole bunch of white sources either. So that's why I'm kind of very on the edge when it comes to these white uh, cards. Um Teshar, I'm I just there's I just don't see enough spots for that here. Invoke the divine, destroy target artifact, enchantment. Enchantment. I'm not seeing really a whole lot of enchant. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, enchantments uh, so far. Uh, if so, it's very minimal. Mostly, it's the artifact in Skolos, and I I don't want to run that many removal spells for Skolos. Um, this first eruption, uh, it deals one damage to each creature without flying. It adds red, red, sacrifice a mountain. I'm just I'm not really feeling that. Um, uh, Urgos, 4943, Rite of Bells and Lock. Uh, it's four, but it's a saga. It's not the creature. So some of my recursion stuff is more creature based and not saga based. Uh, Vicious Offering. It's instant uh, for one and a black. Uh, target creature gets minus two, minus two. But if it was kicked, it gets minus five, minus five, and the kicker sacrifice creature. I don't like that kicker cost a lot. I don't have a whole lot of... I don't have a token strategy going on here. So if I'm sacrificing a creature, it's probably going to mean something. Yes, I would love for it to be like my land of where else on turn 8. But... Um, so I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to keep the Vicious Offering in or not. Um, so Varric's Blade Wing. It's cute. It's novel. But I'm not heavy in red. So I'm not sure if I want to go very deep into Varric's. And I don't have that much of a recursion theme going on, so I'm not sure if I want to... You know, I've got like two or three, but I'm not like super deep into it. Um, Urgos, right. Uh, here, uh, Caligo Skin Witch. Uh, it's kicker three and a black, and it's also one and a black. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, each opponent discards two cards, which is super cool. But it's also... I mean, you don't ever want to cast it for its non-kicked cost. So it's like one and a black, so it's... Four black black for a 1-3. Everyone else discards two cards. 
six for a one three. I'm not I'm not in love with that. So, um, time of ice. Uh, actually, I, I'll need your advice on this one, Zach. How do you feel about time of ice? And and uh, uh, chat. How do you guys feel about time of ice? So time of ice is three and a black for a. I'm sorry, three and a blue for a saga. Uh, lore one and two is tap target creature and it doesn't untap. Uh, and number three is return all tap creatures to the owner's hand. So basically, no one's going to turn sideways on the third lore. But I mean, it's how do you guys feel about that? Zach, how do you feel? It seems really good because it just stops people from attacking for a turn. You always get to bounce at least one creature. Uh, and then on top of that, aren't there um, synergies with other cards that want, want you to have uh, legendary cards or historic cards in your graveyard? And you get them all back? Um, there was one that, that brought them all back, one of the legendary sorcerers, I thought. Uh, it's return, uh, well, there's a couple of legendary, there's, yeah, uh, Primeval's Glorious Rebirth, but, uh, it's not, it's, it's return all legendary permanents, and, uh, sagas aren't legendary, they're just historic. Oh, they're not? Okay. Yeah. Uh, not yeah. as good, then, uh, it's, yeah. like, if you think about it, it's more of just, like, I don't want these big things to hit me for a couple of turns, and then one of them gets put back into their owner's hand, and then nobody attacks for a turn cycle as well. It does, a lot, so, I mean, that it does a lot to the game. Yeah. I mean, I, I can get behind that strategy. I Yeah, it's not it's bad. It's a good stall card. It's good yeah. for stalling. Um, so Holly, Voice of Plenty, I, I think that is going to make the cut. It, 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 it pumps my team, just like uh, uh, Eric said. It pumps your team. Uh, it's a 3-4 flyer. I have Hexproof. It's actually, yeah, it, it is really good, actually, now we're thinking about it. Uh, one one more yeah. point to add for that uh, blue saga though, there is the minor downside of somebody tapping or attacking with creatures that they want to come back to their hands for yep. uh, ETB value. ETB triggers, yep. So it, it does have a downside like that, but usually I think when that's happening, they're, they they don't always have they probably won't have very good attacks most of the time. So probably they probably won't be able to pull it off very easily. But yeah, that, so if you want, if you a, have an ETB value creature, are you really going to turn sideways? You know, and risk yeah, it just depends. It? it just depends. Like it, it, but that that cannon will happen though. Um. All right. So I don't like Shauna. Uh, Garna the Blood Flame. It's Rakdos three and Rakdos for Flash three three. When it enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards or in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. So if you mill me out in your mill strategy. <laughs> I'll do um, it. And, I'll one do it. <laughs> and one other thing that it does have is it says other creatures you can draw off haste. Ooh. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Um, uh, Bard, Steward of Argive. He's the one that makes... Uh, he's the propaganda light. Um, not sure... Basically, creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. I mean, people are going to be turning sideways in our format in this particular box league. Do I want to make them pay for it, but double white? I think if they're going to turn sideways, they're not going to care to pay the one. I just don't think they're going to care. Probably not. Keep... Is it one per... Yep, yep. So... Um, not Teshar, not Bless, not Invoke, Varix first, Fire. Togar, Famine, Incarnates. The six black black, you have to sacrifice some things. I, I don't actually like that. I don't want that. Soul Salvage. Urgaros, the Empty One, uh, four, three, for six. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card at random. Does that evasion? It's got flying, yeah. That's pretty good. Hypnotic Spectre was a good card. Yeah, but this one costs six. That one costs three. Yeah, that is, that is true. But that one hits for yeah. what five? It hits for four. Four? Nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like it. It's literally twice as good as Hypnotic Specter. <laughs> it's literally twice as good as Hypnotic Specter. Um, Merfolk Trickster, uh, tap target creature and opponent controls. It loses all abilities until end of turn. Doesn't that flash? Uh, yeah, that's flash. It's two blue, and it's a two-two. Um. Hmm. 
That's interesting. Making someone yeah. lose all abilities till the turn can be, loses all abilities. Can be very. Uh, it's tricky. It's a tricky card. <laughs> and that's the thing. So it's like, okay, loses all abilities. Wouldn't you just activate them in response? Uh, depends on the ability. Uh, like for instance, like something as like Death Touch or uh, or Life Link or Indestructible. It's like, oh, you don't have those anymore. Um, that's good. That's a good point. Also, you gotta think about like a uh, double blue is pretty restrictive. That might be hard. Yep, in a five off. color deck. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It's not like you're playing this card on turn two. It's like a turn like six or eight card. Yeah. Something somewhere around there, like five, five, five and on is really when you yep. want to play it. You got it. Um, and so I do like it's like, hey, I'm gonna move to combat. I'm gonna tap that creature. So that's nice. The losing abilities though, it's like for example, Golos. He'll just activate in response. So, yeah, it's not, not that good against Golos. Uh, but it does lose all static abilities too. So that's nice. Like you said, it loses flying, loses indestructible. Yeah, you can use it as like a removal spell. Somebody attacks in with like what they think is an evasive creature, and then haha. Yeah, get got basically. I'm gonna put it in. Yeah, put it's. It I think it's worth worth considering. All right, so another one is uh, Weight of Memory. It's three blue-blue for a sorcery. Draw three cards, target player mills three cards. Five to draw three cards. Draw three and somebody mills three? Yeah. Uh, instant or sorcery? Oh, it's five minutes draw three. It's got to be great. Sorcery. It's a sorcery. It's got to be great. Like, it's got to be great. How many, how many actual <laughs> card draw spells do you have? Uh, I have... Uh, I have card advantage spells, uh, velocity cards, draw spells, not a ton. Like hard, like raw hard card advantage, you know? Your uh, divination, opt. Opt is uh, not card blank. advantage. Oh, you're right. Card advantage, you're yeah. right. Um, yeah, yeah but, you're right. Yeah, you have, like ta- you have like Tatiova, that divination. It's like... I also cool. have this... I have this card in here. It's uh, three. Dark Bargain, look at the top three, put two of them in my hand. That's advantage. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, okay, uh, Garna. Mm, I can see myself not wanting to hold up five men every turn to maybe get somebody. Um, How does that card work? So basically, it has flash, and what it is is that let's say that uh, it says when it enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put from there from anywhere this turn. So I can turn sideways. So let me try and think about the floor and ceiling of this card. So I can turn sideways, sail into an opponent, and they'll say, I'll block this, this, and this, and this. And then I can Garna, but it only returns it to my hand. Yeah, that's awkward. Yeah, I'm not I'm not in love. I'm not loving that card. Like five five minute tricks are not tricks. No, they're really not. And so and like I'm not gonna hold up five mana in case you wrath the board. You know what I mean? Yeah, and isn't your wrath exile? Uh I have a I uh, my wrath is an exile, the white one. Yeah. So that doesn't even synergize with that with that card either. Just awkward. Uh, fifty two. I have fifty two cards. I need fifty nine in my commander. So, I guess uh, damping sphere. I mean, I guess why not? <laughs> uh. Icy Manipulator? Do I want to pay four for Icy Manipulator? Yeah, it's so good. So good. One, one man tap something down every turn is so good. Yeah, I guess you're right. All right, so Eric and Chad is saying uh, he likes Garna. You don't have to hold it up to make it good. The haste is relevant. Oh, uh, there might be something to that. I don't know. I'm just I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm feeling it. Uh, Black... Blade Reforged. Uh, I think that's a little too cute. I'm not sure if I'm gonna if I really liking that. Crap. I'm still sitting on 84 cards. <laughs> Are you really? Are you sitting? On oh, sorry, sorry. 85. I forgot about this other one up here. Uh, you know what I could do? I could just fill it with rat colonies because I pulled a bunch of those. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I could just go Yargle and rat colony. It's legal. Just go Yargle. <laughs> <laughs> I just rat colony it. Um. I think I have too much removal, and that's my problem. A problem. It's a good problem to have. I mean, it is a good problem to have. Uh, at this point. So, let me guess. I guess I'll just 
play something like crazy big. Cleric. I've got all the I've got all the removal that I took from. Um, I got all the removal I got from my colors. So like I got my counter spells. I got my exile the creatures. I have a couple of red uh, X spells, uh, like a couple of red burn spells to help me. So I've got. I think I'm good on my on my removal. I think what I might need is a little bit more. Not top end, but <sighs> black blade. I'm not sure. Uh, black blade. Uh, um. I mean, Black Flavor Forge, Equip Legendary, Creature 3, 1-1 one, one for each land. I mean, that that's big. That's really big for its mana cost. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Um, I'm not sure what else. I guess maybe I could do a couple more cute spells just to fill it out. Uh, do that Varex Blade Wing. Maybe Sarah Angel. Four four flying vigilance isn't bad. It's really uh, not. Actually, it's really not. Dauntless Bodyguard. One white for a two one. I can choose a creature and I can sacrifice Dauntless Bodyguard to give it indestructible until end of turn. Uh that card's probably fine. Yeah, maybe. Dauntless Bodyguard. Yeah. It's a protection spell. Uh, it's defensive, but like, I don't know. Just depends. Exactly. Do I have Soul Salvage? Should I just put in Caligo Skin Witch to make everyone discard two cards? Uh, that's a six mana one, or it's six mana one three. Yeah. You gotta think about it like this though. You're casting it for not kicking. I'm I'm never gonna not kick it. That's yeah. the thing. Never gonna not kick it. Uh, I'm gonna put in Soul Salvage. Uh, two and a black for a sorcery. Turn up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. I'm liking that. Um, 25? Er, er, that's two black. Ma Marwin? No. Hey, Primordial Worm. Oh, Thorn Elemental. Yeah. Thorn Elemental. Yeah. Yeah, Thorn Elemental, five green green for a seven seven. Yeah. It, you may have it deal uh, assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. Oh, Bam! Yeah. That card's <laughs> legit. Territorial Allosaurus, four for a five five with kicker two and a green. When there's a battlefield, if it was kicked, it fights another target creature. Uh that's a lot for a I'm not sure. I mean, it's a rare, but... You know, Think about... Uh, uh, oh, can you activate Joda and still do Kicker? Uh, you, the, Kicker's an additional cost. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's a thing. Um, Black Blade... Eric is really... And Eric and Chad is really into the Black Blade. He's really feeling Black Blade. So, I mean, I might put it in just, just for Eric. So, we appreciate you, Eric. Like, what's wrong with Black Blade? Uh, I, if it's it's cute, but I'm not sure if it's where I want to be. I mean, one one for each land. I mean, I get it. I guess it does scale really, really well. So, uh, it gets big fast, like scary big. Mm -hmm. 56. I need three more. Three more cards. Uh, Curator's Wand. It is two and a blue. Enchant permanent. It has hexproof. Whenever it leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, draw two cards. Hmm. This is really, really awkward. I. Oh, what am I doing? I'm like spread really thin on. 
I have like f I have five wizards. One, two, three, four, five warriors. Like ten rogues and six clerics that I want to play. Really, hmm. which is really weird. That is. That's a little awkward. Yeah, and then I have, I think, 11 non... Oh, sorry, I have one creature that's one of every type. Or, um... Yeah, the, the, the stone, stonework pack beast is one of every type. So I have plus one to all those. 11 non-party creatures that I want to play as well. One more card. How are you this good at cutting down? <laughs> oh, I just, you know. I... <laughs> so, somebody is like big under... Okay, so, uh, so some are saying Teshar, some are saying Dauntless Bodyguard. <sighs> Teshar, huh? Um, I'm pretty sure I put Teshar... Teshar is in here. I put Teshar in here. I mean, because, I mean, whenever I cast a Historic Spell, I mean, I do have a Saga in here. I do have Legendaries in here. I can help that with Dauntless. I can return other uh, uh, other creatures. So, in Bolus's Clutches, I already have in the deck. So, that was a good suggestion, but I already have it. I think I'm going to go... So, all right. Should I do Marwin the Nurturer? I don't have ways to pump her. So she would be a strictly worse dork elf. But, I mean, she's still a dork elf. She's also legendary. Uh, or Dauntless Bodyguard. The one that you sacrifice it and give it protection. What do you think, Zach? <sighs> Marwin uh, taps for each of the number of elves you control? Nope. It taps the amount That's... of equal of Marwin's power. And his power gets bigger how? Uh, whenever another elf enters the battlefield. I am not on an elf strategy here. Yeah, so that's not great. Dauntless... It's not. Yeah, Dauntless yeah. Bodyguard is sacrifice it, give something protection from a color. No, you have to choose a creature as it enters. So you can only sacrifice it to that, you yeah. know? Do you have anything else so you I'm... can play? <laughs> ah, we're really scraping here. So we have this curator's ward, which is like whenever if it was historic, it it, it you draw two cards. Uh, Sarah Angel. <laughs> That's better than both of those cards. <laughs> Actually, board the weatherlight. Uh, look at the top five cards of your library. Reveal a historic card, so a legendary. Oh. Ah, that that one. That's it. That's the one. You got a the You got light. all the. Are you playing all the sorceries? Yes. Yeah, and and you have Karn's Temporal Sundering. Hey -oh. I have I have I have the legendary sorceries in here. I've got legendary creatures out the wazoo, including multicolored legendaries. Board the Weatherlight is perfect. It is perfect. It says specifically legend or historic spell. Historic. So it, it hits all of your. Uh, those enchantments. It hits my artifacts. It hits my legend. Uh, it hits my saga. Yeah, saga. And it also hits my point. enchant. It also hits my. Uh, Legendaries, yeah. Yeah. So board the weather light is perfect. That's that perfect. perfect. All right. So that is my deck. All right. Great. So what I'm going to do? So my deck is done. Uh, basically, I'm going to put these lands into it. Um, I'm not putting Zalfer in void. I'm sorry, but uh, I am going to put the memorials and the three duels I pulled, and I'm going to fill the rest with basics on core according to uh, the color distribution. I'm heaviest in Saltai. So those are going to get the largest distribution. And then I am going to post the deck list online. All awesome. right. Uh, so that is my deck. I am finished brewing. This will be an interesting meatball. Zach, we want to bring it over back to you. Yeah, yeah. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. Uh, so I've separated these on like... These top one, there's like all these cards here, are like what I want to play. Uh, there are some cards here that I'm for sure playing, like these ones in the middle here. Like I'm just for sure playing those. I have all my removal spells uh, down here. I'm trying to figure out which ones are worth keeping and which ones are worth not not worth keeping. So this one is 
Into the battlefield, exile on a, on a permanent. So Oblivion Ring hits anything, destroy a creature, planeswalker, destroy destroy a creature. Smite the monster it just has to be great. Destroy a creature. Yep. Yep. Um, these kicker spells just have to be amazing. I have some fight effects here. So this is straight fight and it's also land, which seems fine, but not like super great. Once again, no opportunity cost. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the fact that it can come as a land. I have Rabbit Bite, which just deals damage, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of leaning on these counter spells here, which I don't think could be the greatest. And we got these four counter spells. Uh, moving on, I have two Naturalize effects with Disenchant and Broken Wings. So both Naturalize, Broken Wings hit uh, kills a flyer as well. Seems seems awesome. I kind of want them both. Maybe I'm getting greedy with too many. There's only two Disenchant effects, I suppose. And then I have uh, the black the black uh, one here that can kill an enchantment. But this is like straight up kill kill any creature. That, that's got to be great. So these are like basically unconditional spells here, if you will. Same with this aura. It's got to be great. Those are fine. I, w I like Rabbit Bite over the, the Ambush. But I might not play either of them actually. Because I have like... Two mana sorcery speed, uh, four damage. Uh, two mana sorcery, three damage to anything. Kick it for five more. It deals five to anything. End of the Royals, awesome. Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, it's four mana. Kill anything, uh, creature or planeswalker, and then it could be paid for played for one to kill something CMC two or less. But I don't think it's ever happening. Um, I'm gonna cut this one. Actually, it doesn't seem that good. I think um, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking your conditional removal is yeah. what needs to go. Yeah, exactly. So. so I'm gonna get these fight effects out of here, actually. Yeah, I don't think the fight effects are gonna do you any good because you yeah. just because I'm if if what I saw from things like Mike Steck and stuff like that, you're never gonna want to fight his creatures because you'll lose. Yeah. So I have I have the Ancient Animus, which allows me to put a counter on something and be able to fight something of my choice, but. You know, that one's going to be a little bit more narrow as well. Yeah. Uh, but it allows me to put the counter on it, too, so I kind of get an additional thing from it. But that's still pretty narrow. Well, there's all, there's also this, like, fireball thing and a wrath as well. Um, but these all these are 14, 15 spells that deal with permanence on the battlefield. Uh, Negate deals with stuff on the stack. Uh, and all, all, all of these deal with stuff on the stack. I'm, I'm liking How this... many? What's that? Uh, yeah, any party-based removal to conditional, Howard Liu in chat says. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think floor versus ceiling, uh, probably the party-based ones, probably yeah. not going to be great. The concerted defenses. Well, uh, there are stuff that make them cost less for party, which is, I think, exactly. those are fine. Well, that's the thing. But if you, like, you just got board wiped and someone has some... Like, if I did the exile all things that aren't legendary, you're going to be hosed because you're going to be sitting on like a five CMC removal spell. Yeah, but that's fine. The board got wiped. Okay. It's fine. Okay. I'm fine with casting a five minute kill creature spell. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's fine. Um, negate, I think, is in. Negate's just got to be way too good. No, negate is definitely in. It absolutely stays. It's I like a this force. Card. I like this force spike a lot. Because it hits anything, and it could also be a land. Which yes. is one reason yes. why I really want to play. I guess I could also count these kind of as land land slots as well, instead of spells. Mm, That's I interesting. Wouldn't. I, I would, think. yeah, because like I said, once again, there's no opportunity cost here. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you could count them as lands actually. So you could almost actually run a higher spell count yeah. and a lower yeah. land count because of the opportunity cost. Is lost on those. Yeah. So that's really cool. That's actually really spicy. Uh, oh my god, that's insane. So, uh, anti cognition, one of blue instant, counter creature, planeswalker. You, you for, uh, spell pierce a creature, a planeswalker. I don't know. I'm actually off it. I have this, I have this force spike already that can be a land, and that's no opportunity I... cost versus this, like, Potentially just being a dead card later in the game. Yeah. I can always I mean, play this as a land. I mean, uh, so Jerry in chat says uh, it might be better to count them as a half a land. ETB tapped isn't negligible. Um, I'm definitely inclined to agree with you, yeah. uh, Jerry. Uh, I will say, however, um, 
we're not we're not running full powered mana bases here in the boxing league. Yeah. I, <laughs> so if I have you know what I mean? Lands, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, because like everyone's running ETB tap lands right now. They might be dual color ones and stuff like that, but like Scry Temples are ETB tapped. All the life lands are ETB tapped. Um, so maybe later on, as we maybe crack some more packs and our land bases might get better. Yeah, he might want to see those to sail out. But as of right now, this initial one, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Um, so okay, let's see here. So these are also uh, turn into lands. So let's do that. These are other spells. Uh, okay. So there's that. Uh, I might cut this reclaim the waste. I don't know if I'll have green that easily, and it only puts the lands into my hand. I mean, fixing versus ramp. I mean, definitely two separate things. It is very true, and I really don't want my fixing to be color, like, specific. You know, because, yep. like, green is, like, here's your fixing, but I'm only running, like, you know, less than ten green cards, so, like, why do you want to play those cards? Yep. I'm all, I'm off that. Um, let's see here. Look at the top five cards in my library. I've got a creature card from among them. It's just, like, this is finds me creatures, draw spell. Um, let me do that actually. I'm gonna do my draw spells. Scry to draw a card. This is just drawing cards. This draws the cards and, and fixes me. This draws cards. This is no opportunity cost and it finds an insert of sorcery. Uh, it's fine. I don't know about this one though. Um, target opponent reels their hand. Uh, you choose a card with CMC three or greater, and they discard it. What does it cost? Uh, two and a black, but it's also one of those land ones as well. So again, I think it's worth running. Um, how often do you think you're going to cast that? That you want to spend three mana to oh, make somebody discard a card all the time? I want to cast that later okay. in the game too. You know, after yeah. like turn five, like let me see what you got. Here's all your like your big fatty stuff that you've been holding on to him and just yoink real fast i think that's got to be great uh, okay for that for that sort of like interaction uh this is a regrowth effect also land uh this is fixing i don't know about this one scale scale the heights two to green put a counter on a creature gain two life play additional land draw a card it does a lot. That's that Uro effect, isn't it? Yeah, it's, that's, that's that Uro effect. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's Uro. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, <sighs> it's it seems so good, but like that's all you it can, does, you know. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is the equipment that's based around party members. So plus one, plus zero for each creature in my party. So no, maximum. Drop that. Drop that. Drop that. You think you so? Don't need that. It gives menace. Yeah. Oh, I really yeah like you don't need that. Drop that. Oh, I really like it though. All right. I'm I know. Gonna... I know. Uh, so draw two. Just divination. I can kick it for two and a blue more to draw. Draw three. I just yeah. That's it's hard to say. It's hard for me to say no to just card advantage. It really. No. Is. Yeah. Absolutely. Draw two cards. That's good. Uh, look at top X cards where X is three plus a number of creatures in your party. Put three of those cards into your hand. The rest of the bottom of your library in any order. That just seems awesome. That, um, that floor versus ceiling. Floor versus ceiling. Yeah, floor is five mana, draw three. Ceiling is five mana, look at seven cards and put three of those in your hand. That's pretty good. Five mana, draw three? Yeah. It's always, is that what that card's reading? Am I, am I misinterpreting? Look at the top card? X cards of your library where X is three plus a number of creatures in your party. Put three of those cards in your hand, the rest in the bottom in a random order. I guess so, yeah. You're yeah. right. Uh, I think this cliff, this cliffhaven kite sail is probably too good. I have a couple of creatures that want to make contact, and just giving stuff flying is just good. I think. Um, maybe. So count the number of members in your party. Like how many total party members? Not 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 of each. How many total do you have? Oh, it's twenty, I think. Twenty um, total party members. One, two, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 
22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 with my commander, and I have one in here that makes more uh, warriors. So 27, 28. Okay. Well, that, I think that's plenty of party members. Uh, I mean, you're talking literally a third of your deck. Are you looking to cast and use Tazri for advantage? Is that actually a strategy of yours? That's potentially a strategy, that's for sure. I mean... Is it a strategy? I mean, not potentially a strategy. Is it, it a Yes, strategy? it is a strategy of the deck. It, okay. can, it can do that. All right. That is a thing. Uh, I think this is just no opportunity cost on this spell, and you can just save a creature randomly, which is, like, just okay. Turn to the battlefield, too, so I get extra ETB triggers with that. That seems awesome. So I have one, two, three, four, five spells that come into play also as lands. Although, to be fair, one of them I don't really ever want to do with my Wrath, but I can if I have to. So that's essentially five extra lands in my deck. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen removal spells. Ooh. <laughs> that's a that's lot. Good. That's dense. Maybe crack that down to about ten? I know, right? What's my conditional ones? So this Inscription of Ruin is conditional, even with Kicker. So I can Mind Drought somebody, get a creature back, CMC 2 or less, or destroy a creature, convert a mana cost 3 or less. It's actually not that great. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, move it. I'd say maybe take it down to 12 or 10. Uh, Just destroy a creature, destroy a creature, destroy a creature. Maybe I got Disenchant because I have Broken Wings. I don't know how relevant... I don't want two disenchant effects, because they might not be that relevant. Even though I am playing against Golos, but I don't want a meta against Golos. Yeah, I mean, not so much that we're like, you know... Yeah, I just have... Everything is just anti-Golos, and Mike runs away with the game. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> we're going too hard into Golos. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Ugh. Everything else is just so good. That's the problem. Take the lowest ones and remove them. Uh, it's got kicker. This is unconditional. This is conditional, but kill something big. Unconditional. Uh, too flexible. S stops activated abilities, like more Golos hate, I guess. That's unconditional. That bounces stuff. These are conditional here. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's awkward, though. I really want to play both of these cards. Yep. This one can get kicked for five damage instead for seven. And it's one, how much is one damage? It could be a lot. Maybe just cut them both. Yeah, cut them both. If I can't pick for one of them, just cut them both. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's uh, brilliant. That solved the problem. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. Oh, wait. It's 22 plus these, I said 27, so that's 50. Wait, you have 50 party members? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, All right, 16, so 18, 19, we are 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, at 11 o'clock. So we're at 11 o'clock right now. So do we want to go ahead and wrap it up? Probably. I'm probably going to have to just make these decisions later. Yeah, I you know I think we've we've spent plenty of time doing it, and I think we've had a really good time. We spent a lot of time on our box openings. That was really cool to kind of see it all going. Plus, we spent a little bit extra time uh, talking about you know some of those spoilers that had come out today because yeah. those were some really big bombs, and those were worth talking about. Yeah. So I think we're gonna go ahead and just wrap it up because it's eleven o'clock. Um, so look forward to um, seeing our deck lists online. Uh, from our initial brews. So once Zach finishes up, he'll have this available to everyone to look at. Um, as well as uh, look out for uh, whether or not we're going to end up playing this either via recorded and then cut and edit, cut it and edited, uh, and or via live stream. We'll send out a kind of a poll asking people. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Zach, anything you want to say before we close it up? Uh, just thank you to everyone for stopping out watching us giving us input on you know how to build these decks and uh yeah hope you guys uh, enjoy the videos to come with these though we're, we're, we're all really excited about it here at pwp so hopefully hopefully that excitement rubs off on you guys a little bit 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait. It's going to be really cool, and uh, so we look forward to playing that. Um, and uh, with that, we'll go ahead and close it up. So.